please don't forget to like and subscribe, including today's debate on Islam versus atheism, which is best for society. And we have our interlocutors, T-Jump and the Perfect Dawa, here to help us find some answers. And if you enjoy what either of them have to say tonight, both of our guest links are in the description below. And with that, I'm going to hand it to the Perfect Dawa for their up to 12 minute opening statement. All right, yeah. thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and thanks for watching. Uh, I start, uh, I've written, of course, mm -hmm. uh, Yes, I've written so that uh, I don't forget anything. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> to answer the question of Islam or atheism, which is better for society? We have to first know the meaning of creation. If the meaning was to live like okay. animals in a jungle that we are living into uh, now, then we don't need uh, any religion. I hope everyone agrees with me that we are living in a jungle, but a modern jungle, because the rules are the same. The strongest one get the most, but the weakest one get the least or nothing. The rules um, of the jungle allow you to become rich by killing millions of people. One example is tobacco companies making billions of dollars by killing 5 million people every year. It is the equal uh, casualty of 33 Hiroshima nuclear bomb every year. Weapon cartels produce all kinds of weapons to become richer, and God knows how many people they kill. They even create wars and conflicts to sell more weapons. Corruption, drug, human trafficking, and many more massive problems are because of the rules of the jungle we are living in. If we choose to live like animals in this modern jungle, <clears throat> then we don't need any religions because the jungle is run by our animal nature. We are animals in nature, but the smartest one. If we want to call ourselves human, then we have to act like one and get out of the, uh, our jungle and live in a human world. Animal way of living is me, only me. I don't care about others. I just care about myself and I'm ready to kill millions of uh, millions for my own interests. In the human world, the rules are 180 degrees opposite uh, to the animal world. The rules are first everyone else, love one another and sacrifice for our own kind. If we want to get rid of all our problems and live in a human world where no bad deeds happen, no one goes hungry, no one gets killed by bombs, no drugs, no corruption and no human trafficking, then the only way is to convert to the laws of the most merciful and forgiving God who loves us and wants to guide us out of the jungle. God helped us to have more human life by sending us different prophets in the past. No one can deny that it was the message of love one another by Jesus, peace be upon him, that stopped pagans of Rome and Greece. The barbaric practice they had, which were putting gladiators in those stadiums, killing each other, so that those barbarians cheer and have fun seeing gladiators slaughtering each other. No one can deny that it was teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that stopped Arab pagans from burying their daughters alive, a practice that even today is followed by pagans in India. In the past 20 years, more than 10 million girls have been killed before or after birth in India. 2,500 years ago, Persian became the biggest empire in the world, but they didn't practice any of those barbaric acts Romans, Greeks, and Egyptians practiced because Persian were believing in a messenger of God and his three main teachings were good words, good thoughts, and good deeds. Only by these three teachings, we had Cyrus the Great who just freed people from oppression and he had the first human right laws in the world, which is kept in the British Museum. I can go on and on in many hours and give you facts that how Abrahamic religion changed our jungle to more human world, but of course not yet the absolute human world. God and his religions solved many problems we had in the past. So we needed his guidance in the past. 
but do we still need him? We definitely have a lot of problems even today. If we can solve them ourselves, then I agree that we don't need him anymore. Did God want to solve just few problems or all? The answer is all. So God put the final guidance in Islam to show us the way out of the jungle so that we live in a utopia which is beyond anyone's imagination. For most people, it is impossible, but it is possible by guidance of the almighty God. And that is why Islam is called the last message of God. Not because it, is, it has more rules and praying and fasting, but because it can make possible the impossible. Secularism cannot guide us out of the jungle and solve all our problems. The jungle we are living in is run by our animal nature and doesn't need any set of beliefs, but the human world needs a set of beliefs because it is against our nature. We have to fight against our ego, which is a part of our nature. So we need a set of beliefs to fight our nature. The more we sacrifice, the more human we are, and the more selfish, the more animal we are. Can secularism guide us, uh, guide people to sacrifice, especially absolute sacrifice? No, only God can do that. And he will reward us uh, with heaven if we live and die like a human, but he will punish us if we reject his command and live and die like animals. Now it is up to us to choose this jungle and see our fellow human beings get killed by many different ways, just because some people want to, be, to get richer and richer. To see hundreds of millions of people live in a hell on earth, earning $1 a day and many other injustice and dis, uh, disasters. Or we want to decide to follow the commands of the most merciful and for, forgiving God and live in a human world. Which one? you choose. I don't want to see all these injustice because I care about everyone else. How about you? All right. Thank you very much. This was my Thank uh, you so very much, The Perfect Dawa, for your opening statement. And with that, we're going to hand it over to T-Jump for his up to 12 minute opening statement. All right. So the question is, which is better for society, Islam or atheism? And the ideology, which is the best to find out which is the ideology best, we can look at the stats from all around the world to see which ideologies actually solve the most problems. If you are curious, which states have are the most and least religious, simply check the Pew Forum's religious landscape survey. It is all there. And you can go ahead and check out the various states and how they are faring in terms of social well-being. The correlation is clear and strong. The more secular tend to fare better and the more religious on a vast host of measures, including homicide and violent crime rates, poverty rates, obesity, uh, diabetes rates, child abuse rates, education, attainment levels, income levels, unemployment rates, rates of sexually transmitted disease, teen pregnancy, et cetera, you name it, on nearly every sociological measure of well-being, you're most likely to find that the more secular states with the lowest levels of faith in God and the lowest levels of church attendance are faring best, and the most religious states with the highest levels of faith in God and rates of church attendance are faring the worst. The same pattern includes the worst examples of secular nations, even if you include China, Russia, North Korea, whatever. These are far more developed and better off than the majority of Muslim countries. And so only, even if you take the worst examples of both worlds, secular nations do better. Uh, the majority of Muslim countries are doing worse off than the majority of secular nations. If we look at the best nations in the world who have the best levels of human rights, they're all majority secular nations. Um, one of the biggest problems that Islamic nations face is the focus on religious beliefs has on educations. In many Muslim countries consists primarily of religious rather than scientific programs. And this focus on religious education as a detriment to society and holds them back and is one of the primary reasons they do worse in every metric. Uh, education in the West tends to focus on scientific ones, which is why education in the West and secular nations is significantly better in every respect. Islamic nations, women, women are second class citizens. And it's not just that women can't contribute directly to the workforce, but that women aren't educated at the same standard and thus aren't able to raise children to be scientists and engineers as effectively. Another one of the contributing reasons why Islamic societies do objectively worse in every measure. 
Uh, Islamist legal systems are based on antiquated legal environments, largely based on old UK law without update merged with Sharia law and is not compatible with modern business, holding back businesses from being able to be successful in Muslim countries. Another determining factor in why Muslim countries do objectively worse in every metric. Some Muslim countries have tried to resolve this by moving away from Islamic laws like the Dubai free trade zones and the Jibal Ali in the 70s was probably the first major development of its kind, but the law outside of business still needs revision. So this shows that um, only by leaving Islamic law do Islamic countries make progress. If Islam isn't compatible, isn't capable of solving the problems of its own countries, it has no business thinking it can solve the problems in other countries and the rest of the world. Until Islam can build up its own countries to the level of prosperity, development, education, standard of living, opportunity, and quality of life of the Christian, Jewish, and secular nations, then it isn't even a serious contender to be the solution for humanity. Judaism, Christianity, and secularism are all infinitely better options demonstrated by all of the evidence we have today. Uh, Research by Helmuth Nyberg and Richard Lynn, Emeritus Professor of Psychology at the University of Ulster, compared belief in God and IQs using the data from U.S. studies of many, many like thousands of people. The average IQ of atheists is six points higher than the IQ of religious people, showing that probably the smarter people tend towards atheism because it is a more intellectual position. So taking a less intellectual position is a detriment and a good reason why we should not adopt uh, religious beliefs in general. Uh, in a Pew survey study on a global study of religion and education around the world ranked, Jews is the most educated, followed by Christians and atheists, with Muslims and Hindus being the lowest level of education. So uh, this is an indication that Islam is not even close to a solution here. Again, it's not even within the category. If we look at Nobel Prizes, uh, Christians make up the most with about 65%. Second is Jews with 20%. Third is atheists with 10%. And fourth is Buddhists with 1%. And Muslims go with a solid 0%. Zero point. Like, they get four. They got four. It's four, four Nobel Prizes. Good indication that they are not qualified to do anything relating to solving problems in the world since most of the problems that are actually solved are solved scientifically. Let's recall Norman Borlaug, the man who literally saved a billion lives by inventing genetically modified wheat. Science is what saves humanity, not religious beliefs that make absolutely no progress in science. Um, we can also recall the time when math was banned in Islam, math and trade, which said when Islam was the leading technological uh, ruler of the world, this completely undermined them and led them to where they are today, where they're the lowest level of scientific development in the world. If we compare answers among scientists, uh, personal belief in a God is about 7%, whereas disbelief is about 70%. So the vast majority of the top scientists do not believe in a God. Um, if general scientists, the same trend is there, even though it's much smaller, just average everyday scientists, it's about 41% are uh, not believing. And so if we look at Sage Journal, are Muslim countries more prone to violence by Niels Per Gleichstert and Ida Rolfdesen? Muslim countries are also overrepresented among the countries, the high levels of forms of internal violence, non-state conflict, just not like wars, one-sided violence, highly representative human rights policies, uh, repressive human rights policies, and countries that practice capital punishment. So kidnappings are 56% above average in Muslim countries. Murders are three times higher in Muslim countries. Uh, worst countries for human rights in violations, 80% are Muslim. If we just take the entire wall, all of the countries that are the worst human rights violations and rule of law, 80% are Muslim. So if we take what... Uh, my opponent said in the opening, seriously, this fact demonstrates and proves it absolutely false that adopting Islam can solve any of these world's problems and decrease crime and anything. We have the data is false. Um, the more Islamic countries move away from tenets of Islam and adopt secular values, the better the countries become. Uh, Ironically, Islam is about the last ideology you want to be a serious contender for this role. Gender-based violence, domestic abuse, honor killings, FGM, female genital mutilation, marital rape, all higher in Muslim countries, the non-Muslim countries, um, the non-Muslim countries being the lowest in secular nations. In conclusion, Islam isn't the solution um, for Islamic countries. In fact, it's one of the biggest problems. Therefore, it's definitely not the solution for mankind, especially since we already have ideologies which do objectively better in every imaginable way. Until Islam can fix the problems in its own countries, it definitely can't be considered as a plausible solution for any other countries. Mm -hmm.
thank you so very much, T-Jump, for your opening statement. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to our interlocutors for 40 minutes to an hour of open dialogue. All right. Uh, shall I start or? Your work. Yeah, OK. I would like to uh, see if I can share something. Uh, uh, Amy, is it possible that to share uh, a link? To share a link or to share your screen? Yeah, a screen, I think, yeah. Sure, yeah, give me. Uh, uh, I, I have to, just just a moment, please. I think I have oh, to go okay. to this. Share screen, yeah? Sir? Yes, I think it's, uh, uh, all right. Share. Is it shared now? Uh, it's loading, and now just give me one second to send it over to everyone else. Here on my screen, probably. Oh, yeah. There we go. Should be all good. I see nothing. Is, do you see it? No. I don't see it now. Do you? You just. No. Dark. The screen share is causing me to lag. Can you? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Can you cancel the screen okay, share? I, like I will. Just, I will uh, cancel. Just, just uh, describe but, it. Just describe it. Uh, let me see here. I can read it for you. It's a. Uh, <clears throat> it is uh, a recent news. More than fifty Republicans in the House of Rep uh, Representatives support Banks' resolution against nuclear deal with Iran. Uh, aimed uh, Russian Ukraine war. <clears throat> uh, an update uh, GCPOA would increase the risk of a nuclear Iran, enrich terrorists, and destabilize the entire region. All these uh, aside, the oppress in, <clears throat> uh, sorry, <clears throat> the process in Vienna would be a violator of the deal for any normal administration. Okay, and then just a few days ago, Iranian terrorists threatened to kill American citizen in the United States. And the Iranian government has openly claimed responsibility um, for the rocket attack near the US uh, consulate in Iraq. Banks uh, added, uh, let's be clear, Joe Biden is not just negotiating with terrorists. He is sending billions. Is there a point? To, like I'm not to following terrorists. the point. Sorry. Sending billions to terrorists to lift sanctions. Your country has destroyed the entire Middle East, okay, by supporting the godfather of international terrorism, which is Iranian regime, in 40 years. Obama sent them over $100 billion, and it was only Donald Trump who came out from that the point? stupid. The point is that you destroy our countries and you blame it on Islam, okay? It is, it is as if as I say, the entire Latin America is blamed the problem there on Christianity, which is absolutely wrong, or Africa. It is the wealthy country, the rich country, even Russia and China, they are oppressing all other countries for their own interests. And you don't have to blame Islam for all this, you know, Disaster okay, um, that you have created. Don't support it. Wait, Iran, one second, one for so so, no, let me so let's say let's say you're right. Let's say you're right. Um, who I'm was not, it? You see, that's who, a fact. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So, so let's. I don't. Let's let's say you're right. So whose fault is it that Islam decayed, even though it was the leader in the world? Was it America who didn't exist yet? Why was it in the 12 and 1300s when Islam was the most technologically advanced and had the most education and the most trade? Who who's which Western nation was it that caused Islam to fall? I said that from the beginning, uh, the, the, we are living in a jungle. Of course, there are different, you know, elements who, uh, you know, abuse religion. They what was the answer to the everything. question? No, the answer is that uh, the answer is that uh, Islam came to solve the problems, and it solved a lot of problems. But I didn't no, 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 no. no. So you, Islam was the leader yeah. of the world. Then Islam collapsed because Islam banned math and banned trade with Jews. So Islam caused the problems in Islam. Islam, which was the leader in the world, 
had all of the technology, had the most powerful militaries, had everything going for them. And then they decayed and became weak. So other countries could then take advantage of them. But that's not the other country's fault. That's Islam's fault because it destroyed itself. And so, yes, will evil people take advantage of them now? Of course they will. But what set them back wasn't the other countries. It was Islam. Islam is the problem. And it doesn't matter. Even if I can grant that America is siding with Iran or whatever, that does that cause the female genital mutilation? No. Does that cause the honor killings? No. Does that cause the killing of gay people? No. Those are all tenants in Islam. Islam is the thing that caused those. So of all the stats I listed, of the ones of violent crime, it was of non-state conflict. It was of people killing other people, of murder, of rape, of crime, of people in those countries doing things evil because of Islam. So nothing that you said there, even if America is evil, which I mean, I kind of agree America is evil. None of that is the cause of the problem here. The cause of the problem of all the things I listed was Islam. It wasn't that America did it. America didn't add female genital, genital mutilation into, into Islam. That was what Islam added okay. into it. Now, can I, can I answer you? Okay. Can I answer? Uh, as a born um, in a Muslim family and a Muslim country, I have never heard these uh, uh, female, uh, uh, sorry, circumcision or what do you call it? Okay, I have never heard it in my entire life. Recently, I have heard it because it is an African. Yes, the, it is a. It is. A, I think uh, it was um, Reza Aslan who was uh, talking to CNN as well. He had more uh, research about that. That Ethiopia, uh, a mostly Christian country, has the most uh, problem uh, with these women. Um, uh, Mutilation. Okay, so oh, I have. I, I had countries. never. I, my problem. sisters, my sisters, my mother, my entire relatives never had I, heard I, such a things. Okay, so I, I don't not, care what your family has heard. This Anecdotes are evidence. Though. This is not Islamic. This is an African problem. Has entered some uh, Muslim countries and people adapt it, but it has doesn't have anything to do to do with Islam. Okay, and Except Muslim do it Islamic now. countries. Let, let why why say, is it? One, one sec. Well, if you say it has nothing to do with Muslim countries, why is no, it that this is the say, most in Muslim countries? I say it countries? doesn't. It doesn't have the, anything to do with Islam because. Okay. Why? Uh, if it has nothing to do with Islam, why is it the most in Muslim countries? No, I told you right now that Ethiopia has the most, uh, you know, case of. I literally just read uh, the stats from the Pew Surveys data. I have the stats. Of all countries who have the most violations of human rights, 80% yeah, are Yeah, okay, human rights you are talking about, or you are talking about <clears throat> women uh, mutilation. You were talking, if human rights you are talking about, <clears throat> okay, you better, uh, you know, uh, don't show your face like that is not so, <clears throat> I think, nice. But anyway, I told you that you support dictators in our country. The practice okay? is almost universal. Female oh, genital mutilation right. is almost universal in Somalia. Guess what? That's a Muslim country. Uh, Guinea, Djibouti. How about, how about Ethiopia? How about Ethiopia? Ethiopia. Well, Did you know. check? It, it, it has the most uh, women mutilation in Ethiopia, and it is most Christian country. So please, uh, if you are talking about human rights, okay? If you are talking okay. about human rights violation, I told you that. You support dictators in our countries. We could have a beautiful Middle East, beautiful uh, democratic countries in, in the Middle East. If you didn't, your country, USA and UK didn't make a coup d'etat against our uh, democratic prime minister in 1953 and bring it down, put a dictator uh, there, we would have, uh, Iran would be second uh, Japan because we, uh, I don't the know what regime. You're uh, so you because because you don't have the knowledge of you, such you a seem thing. like you're going off that's of why the you don't know you no, seem like you you're don't have you don't like, have the knowledge. let me get back to the point so so you know at a point here female genital mutilation in uh, the middle east is highest in northern saudi arabia southern jordan iraq including kurdish regions also been discovered in Syria, oman and united arab emirates i said that it is not islamic if it was islamic i would have my sisters would have been also uh, mutilated my sisters, no, no, my no, mother, no. my hold I, I on, didn't on, hear it. One sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Ever in, in my life. One sec, one sec, one sec. So, so your argument there was that if it was Islamic, then it would have happened to your family. It didn't happen to your family, therefore not it, only it, my it family. depends in Islam. Not That's called an anecdotal fa fallacy. Not so not only. Fact, one sec, one sec, I'm making the point here. So even if it didn't happen to your family, 
That doesn't matter if it happens to millions of other families in Islam from Islamic doctrine. What happened to your family from your interpretation doesn't matter. What we care about here is, does this ideology cause a bad effect on the whole? I say it's not think, in the one ideology. Second, one second, one second, one second, so, is, one, second one second, one second. So if your interpretation, what you think is the truth, is not is my interpretation. Wrong, I'm not. I'm not. One sec. So your no, you, interpretation. You are, you are stop, putting. Stop interrupting. Words stop in interrupting. Let me finish. Stop putting, interrupting. Stop interrupting. So if what what your interpretation of Islam, because it's not true, it's just a made up religion. Your interpretation may not include female genital mutilation, but it does for millions of other people around the world. So if we adopted Islam, millions of people who adopted those other definitions would increase the rates of female genital mutilation and human rights violation. Whether you think it's true Islam or not doesn't matter because if we adopted Islam, more people would adopt those harmful variations. So it doesn't matter what your family did. It's called an anecdotal fallacy, literally a logical fallacy that proves your argument is garbage. It doesn't matter. It okay, happens now, all over the I world. Say, That's what say, matters. Can I answer? You put more words in my mouth. I didn't say it, it to my family. I said I was born and grown up in a Muslim country. I had never heard it in my entire life. Not my family, not my relatives, no one. I had never heard such a things. okay? So you say that it is my only my family? No. It, I just heard it in Europe when I came a few years ago. I heard this one that uh, there are countries that they uh, practice such a you know uh, act. Okay, and I right, heard right. it. And, uh, and so what I said time, was first time I heard it from uh, this Reza Aslan on CNN. I don't care. CNN, I don't CNN. care. What yeah. you heard doesn't matter. Your personal anecdote of what you heard is irrelevant. It's not evidence. No one cares. I have data from the entire planet, from the entire Pew survey data of millions of people. I know what's happening check, in the world. Check Ethiopia. Check I don't Ethiopia. care about Ethiopia. No, I don't why care. you don't care? What, what, wait, wait, what, what happens in Ethiopia doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. I just it listed, most... one sec, one sec. What, what you're saying does not make sense here. I said, here it's happening in Northern Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Iraq, how about, Kurdish region, how about Ethiopia? Oman, Syria. Wait, wait, wait. So Can it doesn't check? matter what's happening in Ethiopia. Literally, uh, it doesn't well, matter. It matters very much. Religion because it causes it is, this problem. No, so it is Christianity as well. Yeah, it is in yes, Christianity. Christian, I'm an atheist. I don't care about Christianity either. Christianity is also bad. Your religion is causing a problem. Atheism is better. It, is it doesn't cause a problem. Religion. Which atheist countries have a problem with FGM? Name one. Any, any atheist country. But I, uh, I said that this is an African problem, okay? And has I just listed Middle East, Arabia. Saudi Arabia, yeah, said, Jordan, yeah, Iraq. It has enter, yes, it has entered in some Muslim countries as well. Which okay? atheist countries has this problem? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so th None. this is the biggest. Zero. So this is, None okay, of them. This is the biggest problem in the world. Yeah, is it the biggest problem in the world? Uh, I don't think so. But it's I was one talking of them. about. I was talking about. Uh, Tobacco companies kill 5 million people every year, 33 nuclear bombs, okay? And atheism cannot solve the, such a problems, okay? Drug problem, war problem, you know? Atheism is and, solving that problem. So, so one sec, so the companies taking advantage of people, atheism is solving those problems. The secular nations are making laws against tobacco usage. They're making laws against companies taking advantage of South American companies, all that's coming from secular nations, secular Western nations who are making laws based on humanist principles to try and not take advantage of people. So the only ones making progress in that field is atheist nations. But it, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I said that the, all these comes from uh, Abrahamic religion. It started from Abrahamic religion. Slowly, slowly, all we have today is from Abrahamic religion. Even, even if you are secular, uh, you don't know that you are uh, following those... Uh, great teachings of Jesus and Moses and Prophet Muhammad, okay? Wait, wait you're uh, saying that um, secular morality comes from the Islamic religion? Is that what you're saying? It, it, not only Islam, uh, from Christianity and Judaism. It okay, well, we can prove that false. Time. Sorry? We can prove that false. So, so morality predates it any religion. From that. It started from then. I no, it didn't. We can it, prove that false. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's literally what yes. I'm addressing. We can prove that false. We know morality comes from evolution. There's morality in apes that we can find and we can see the patterns that precurse human morality in other animals that have no religion. So we know for a fact, it does not come from any religion. It comes specifically from evolution and social norms and how game theory interacts with our 
cultural groups it has nothing to do with religion. We know that our social norms come from evolutionary tendencies and what causes societies to work well together due to cooperation incentives and game theory. So no, it does not in any way come from a, um, Christianity or Islam. And in fact, all of the good principles that came from Christianity and Islam and Judaism predate uh, all of those and come from Hinduism. Uh, okay, so you mean that when uh, gladiators were uh, killing each other in those stadiums, uh, Romans and uh, Greeks, uh, it was uh, Hinduism that uh, solved those problems or Jesus' uh, message solved those problems? Well, no one solved or, those problems, uh, but or, the principles... The principles uh, it just solved come... itself, yeah, just itself, okay. No, right. second nations are solved in those problems. How about, how about uh, girls were buried alive in, in Arabia? Yeah, Who yeah, solved those, that problem? The, the, not the Muslims, because it's still happening. So again, okay. the uh, still, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 it's still happening. You're, you're, this is where what Muslims do all the time. You're diverting. No, you're, you're diverting where, where, where from the topic. Happening? You're diverting from the topic. You're not no, addressing you, the topic. You hold up, hold up, hold up. Who solved? Who solved? You who made solved a problem. One sec. Okay. One sec. You made a point. You said that the principles of morality come from uh, Christianity and Judaism and Islam. That's yes. false. <clears throat> I can prove that false because these principles, like the golden <clears throat> rule, come from Hinduism. Hinduism had them before Christianity or Islam or Judaism. It's an older religion that also had the principles of the golden rule. So the principles don't come from Hinduism or don't come from Christianity or Islam or any of the Abrahamic religions. The principles come from other religions that predated those. So that point you made is false. This other irrelevant point you made about Islam making some progress okay, and TJ, still doesn't TJ. matter. All right. So you mean that... <clears throat> Uh, the Romans and the Greeks, they stopped those barbaric acts because of Hinduism, not because of Christianity. No, no, none of that matters. None of that matters. So again, yeah, follow okay. the conversation. You made an argument. The principles that are more... I'm asking you a question. Hold, hold so up, hold up, hold I'm up. Asking so you you're question. making a different irrelevant point. So let's go back to the point we were talking about before. Okay, when you, you cannot said, answer, then what, what, you cannot no, answer. No, 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 no. You, you're deferring. It's all the time. They divert from the topic to try and avoid when they're oh, about that. to get crushed. So you made a point. You made the point that the moral principles come from the Abrahamic religions. I yes. proved that point false. No, How they come from Hinduism. Hinduism. I've asked you a question then. No, no, no. Your question doesn't matter. Did ah, Hinduism okay. exist before right. the Abrahamic okay. religions? Yes. Did Hinduism come up with the golden rule and the moral principles that Christianity stole it from? Yes. Therefore, these moral principles came from Hinduism. Whether or not Hinduism solved some other problem in some other location literally doesn't make a difference. Your argument was proven false. They did not come from Abrahamic religions. So you mean that the problems there were solved by Hinduism? I didn't say anything about problems. Follow the conversation. I said, did the principles originate from the Abrahamic religions? No. Problem solved. So you mean that the Abrahamic religion followed Hinduism? Yeah? Yes, they took from Hinduism, yes. Okay, where in Hinduism, uh, can you please show me in Hinduism where it says that don't bury your daughters alive. Don't kill your daughters. Where? where how does that follow Why, from yeah. anything I said? Like, what is that? I said that the moral principles that Christianity... Why comes, they are still... Why wait, 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 wait. So, so, you're, so again, you're, doing, you're doing the Muslim thing where you're going off on some irrelevant tangent that has nothing to do with anything right. I said. So I said... The principles, like the golden rule, the foundational principles of the entire religion come from Hinduism. The golden rule is in Hinduism. It predates Christianity. So the foundation of morality, of the moral principles, is in Hinduism. Now, how those were adopted into specific little weird things about burial, that doesn't matter. The original tenets of the foundation of morality does not come from any of the Abrahamic things. Not burying your dead is not a foundational moral tenet. That, like, that's that's just a silly little thing that changed in different cultures. It's not a thing in morality. So why they haven't still yet, uh, yet solved the problems of burying daughters of love in India? That in literally India. has nothing to do with the point. Uh, it doesn't have any. Okay. They, uh, I could come with a lot of facts that uh, they haven't been able to solve any problems in their own you know, community. All right? That literally but has nothing that, to do with the point. But, uh, but let's talk about the world problem that we are facing today. Okay. And you mentioned, of course, uh, a lot of problems in Muslim countries. And I address that, that it is because of, uh, it's not only in Muslim countries, it's in Christian countries, in African countries. And it is because of some, um, some uh, you know, uh, superpowers, they want to benefit from those countries. So they keep them, you know, coup d'etat in uh, Chile, uh, bringing down Salvador Allende it, uh, wasn't because of Islam. It was because of CIA and all these 
So they, they don't do this only to Muslim countries. I say that they do it to other countries as well. But Muslim countries are also affected by uh, these superpowers and their, you know, their interest uh, to keep uh, dictators in power. And if they didn't, uh, you know, yes. Uh, and if they didn't uh, involve in our, our countries, we would have beautiful, perfect countries, okay? No, that's literally false. We can prove that right. false just by looking past the history. Okay, uh, th that's, uh, I, I gave you the fact that uh, if uh, 1953, you didn't bring down our democratic country, the, uh, sorry, government, in Iran and put a dictator Shah in power, then we would have second Japan in Iran because it hasn't happened, because it has gone wrong, then I cannot, of course, prove you. So democracy brings development. Democracy brings, uh, you know, uh, allows people to develop, but in dictatorship, right. uh, the, you know, hundreds, uh, tens of thousands of highly educated people have been ex uh, executed by this regime that I showed you right now, the Muslim no, regime. Sorry, Joe, Joe Biden is trying to save them by by the Muslim anywhere. regime is executing people. It's not a Muslim regime. It's a it mafia is. regime. It's a mafia regime. And which Putin, religion? You put, which religion are they? And your country, they put it. Which, they don't which believe religion? They, they believe in money. They don't believe in anything but money. They are a bunch no, of mafia. no. That's false. They're, they're, which they're religion is their state? Which religion they, is the country? Which is the official religion of their? Government. What is the official religion that is stated on their government? What religion? They, they are. They are lying. So uh, why have? I, to I don't care that? if you think they're lying. What religion does it say that they are based on? They they say whatever they want to say. Okay. Well, what is, what do uh, they say? What do they want to say? They say they say they are Muslim, of course. Yeah. Yes, they, they say, say they're Muslim. But, but, yes, but they, they are not. If uh, so, so that's, uh, that's okay. If you, no if, you want to, if you want do, do to, if you want to, if you want to believe a bunch of mafia. If you believe in a bunch of mafia, then that's your problem, okay? Do you know what a no true Scotsman is? Sorry? No true Scotsman. Do you know what a no true Scotsman fallacy is? No, I don't know. Okay, no true Scotsman fallacy is when you say, oh, they're not a real Scot because they don't have cream porridge or whatever. You can say they're not real Muslims because they, they, don't, they don't adhere to your interpretation of Islam. No, they are equally as real Muslims as okay. you are. You just right. disagree with their interpretation. I, they I are Muslims. All right, I ask you a question stealing in islam is forbidden okay do you know that at least yeah in your interpretation no it there. is in, it is in islam in islam in any religion, your interpretation any, any religion says that stealing is forbidden no, no, no. any I any don't, government, i don't think you understand, I don't think you understand. Every, no, i'm asking oh. you a question any government even a, a secular government says stealing is forbidden Corruption your interpretation forbidden. your interpretation okay. so it, they if think they're fine yeah, so they think they're, no, they're no, allowed in Islam okay. to do the things they're okay. doing. They think Sweden they're perfectly fine. A, yeah, Sweden is a secular government and they say stealing is forbidden. Is my interpretation or is that my interpretation? It is, well, they, I, they, I say, they say stealing is forbidden. Okay, robbing okay. is forbidden. So it is in their constitution. All right. So Islam, nice. says, Islam says stealing, robbing people, okay, is uh, forbidden. It's haram. All right. But this government in Iran, everybody know, I can show you a lot of facts. They steal billions of dollars. The, the leader, he didn't have even a flat. Now he's $200 billion rich. U.S. Embassy in Baghdad said $95 no billion, dollars, $95 billion rich. U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Okay. A few years okay, ago. Still Muslim, that so the that leader is $95 the billion dollars rich. Okay. All right. That's, okay, he's uh, still Muslim. All right. That's uh, your, uh, everybody listen and see that how you, you know, you try to run away from the, the answer. Well, no, 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 your answer isn't an answer. Like they are Muslim, whether or not you think they're correct Muslims doesn't matter. They are Islam. They believe in Islam. They, they don't believe in Islam. They believe no, 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 no. That's, that's your belief. That is your problem. Okay. They do. They say we're Muslim. They go to the mosque. They pray to Allah. They're Muslim, whether you believe it or not. Whether you think they're not doing the right Muslim way, it doesn't make a difference. They're Muslim. If okay. we adopt Islam, there's going to be a lot of people who do what they're doing and have their interpretation and disagree with your interpretation. It okay. doesn't matter if you think it's the correct one or not. Islam will cause that. What we see, what we see them doing, Islam That's causes not, Islam that. doesn't cause that. Joe Does. Biden caused that. 
Barack Obama does that, okay? By saying, <laughs> that, is, that has been happening yeah, for a saying, long time before any of the American presidents. I read for you, I read for you from 50 Republicans now that you are going, your government is going to send hundreds of billions of dollars like uh, Barack Obama did to the biggest terrorist regime on the planet. Which doesn't, the only one who killed, doesn't address the point. That's irrelevant. Uh, yes, it's literally it, irrelevant. So, yeah, so like, because you support, wait, wait, wait. So, so one you second, support go, go, back, go back, go back, go back in time. Let's go back in time. Terrorists. Let's go back in time. So did America create these organizations, these governments? Yes. No. Yes. yes. No. Yes. No. They okay. they were around before America. All no. of these comp all of the, the 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 Islamic countries were around a long time before no, the America. Islamic America's countries, yes. Uh, Islamic countries, yes, but these terrorists and the problems, regime, the problems in these the Islamic countries were still there. They were these still there. The head of terrorist uh, you know, international terrorism came to power 43 years ago because USA was afraid that left groups take the power after the Iranian revolution. So they helped this caveman, terrorist guy, uh, ISIS guy oh. to take the power because they knew that he's not going to ally with the Soviet Union, okay? And they have been supporting this regime in 43 years. And they- Literally irrelevant. Literally doesn't matter. Iraq Islamic war. terrorists- Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Like, Hezbollah. I, I, can, I can debunk everything you're saying. Just everything you're saying in like five seconds. Islamic terrorism has been around since the Hassassins in the, in the 1200s. Okay, problem solved. So no, America didn't cause these problems because America wasn't around 1200 years ago. Yes, there were terrorists a long time ago, also Muslim, also same problems, were not invented by America. Okay, the, which terrorism? Uh, can you uh, give me a terrorist attack before 1979 by Muslims? Can you Google it? Uh, I, I, I can Google it. Let's Google it. Uh, yeah, Google it. Before Islamic 1979, terrorism. I haven't found a single terrorist attack Early. anywhere in the world. Mm. A terrorist attack by Muslims before 1979. I yes. haven't found a single one. The first one was one, uh, 1981 in Lebanon by Hezbollah. After Iranian revolution. Sorry, uh, no, uh, the first one was... Uh, 1980 in our, uh, Saudi Arabia, also again by Iranian regime, okay? Because Iranian regime has always wanted to occupy uh, Saudi Arabia. So every single raid, every single uh, destruction and killing of one group of people, that's a terrorist incident, and there's thousands of them in Islamic countries prior to 1979. Okay, uh, you are talking about conflict and war, okay? It has been no, no, I mean, like everywhere. just a group of Give people. Me a Give me a terrorist attack, I said. So, so a, terrorist attack, a terrorist attack like, is defined as an attack of one group trying to change a political system. So if one tribe no, in the Middle East decides to kill and slaughter and rape another tribe because they want no, political no, change, that's no. the terrorist attack. No, no, no. That's, of course, it's, uh, if you want to call that one, even USA is attacking different countries, that's also a terrorist sure. attack. America yeah. is terrorist too, but your country <laughs> yeah. was terrorist way before America existed. Uh, okay. <laughs> That, so the conflicts, everybody know that conflicts ha, has existed everywhere. I'm not talking about conflict. Planet. I'm talking about uh, genocide. Uh, yeah, it has existed and uh, uh, it ha doesn't have anything to do with Islam. Okay. Literally because does. Islam so if it happens forbid, more in Islamic Islam, countries, no, it has to do with Islam. Islam, for, Islam forbid it. Okay. Islam doesn't allow such your inter That's your subjective interpretation. What you okay. think it forbids doesn't matter. The question is, is if we adopt Islam, Will more people do genocide? And the answer is yes. If, if the more Islamic countries do genocide than other countries and always have throughout most of history. So Islamic as a doctrine does not prevent genocide. It causes more of it than other doctrines. Like Jainism, it, there is no Jainism genocide. If we just gave I, Jainism to everyone in the world, there would be zero genocide. But it is, Islam, it is there's the jungle. Genocide. I told you, it is the rules of the jungle that um, uh, you know, created and created everywhere on this planet that you can become rich by killing people, by abusing religion, by abusing yes, uh, like nationalism, by abusing uh, like you know, even color, okay? Abusing like Muhammad. Uh, what Muhammad? He he abused the uh, rich off of abused, conquering and killing uh, people no, and taking land. See. Yes, no, I let agree. Me see. Let me see. Wait, did he? Uh, I'm talking about uh, like uh, conflict, like Second World War that uh, uh, you know uh, Adolf Hitler abused nationalism. Okay. Like and, Muhammad? Uh, yes. Which okay. All right. Where did Muhammad use nationalism? He where? just he just wanted to. Uh, you um, know, the the Quran, where it literally says, if people are of other nations, or they leave Islam, we have to kill them. Like other that, nations. Can you example? give me the verse? Can you give me the verse? 
other I could nations. Bad time. Like, that you want me to yeah. Google it? Muhammad no, nationalism. Dave, Google it, yeah. Google it, yeah. Give me the, the verse that say people of other nations want to leave Islam. Give me the verse. I, I can just give me some time. I'll email it to you later if you want. Like this is not like a hard yeah because thing. you just you just have heard something from Muhammad here there, and then you... murders murders by Muhammad. Um, in Quran murders Quran Muhammad wars. All right. Okay. Uh, According to yeah. Muhammad's rules of wars, no justification exists for attacking civilians. Good good job. But um, when when they reject or leave the the faith, you can kill them. Okay. Give me, give me the verse of Quran, please. I ask you, give Wait. me the verse of Quran that says if Killing they reject or leave Islam. Quran. Apostates men are to be killed while women are to be held in solitary confinement and beaten every three days till they recant and return to Islam. Penalty for apostasy in Islam. Which verse? Which verse? Uh, you don't know. <laughs> that's that's your uh, problem. You don't I'm, know. I'm just reading. I, just, I don't need to give the verse. Like this. Uh, is, yeah, you have does, to. Does, give it, the verse. does it matter if I give the verse? Like no. Yeah, you, it matters because there is no such a verse in Quran. You you just <laughs> what, hear what, is, what is the penalty for apostasy in in? Nothing. In there is no Islam. penalty for apostasy. There is no compulsion in religion in Islam. Okay, that's a fabricated hadith by some. Okay, let know, me let me put it this way. What what is in most Muslim countries? What is the penalty for apostasy in Quran? They say yes, death. Okay. So where but, did they get that from? Did they just make it up? They, they get they, it they, from a they get it from a fabricated hadith. Okay. They don't get so, it from so, Quran okay. so, because so, Quran says Quran what, says that? no. That, that's a great point. Religion. That's a great point. Let's talk about that. So most Muslims in most Muslim countries think Not that we most should... Muslim don't come with most 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 Muslim. Okay. There's a there's a few surveys. There, there are a bunch of dictators in these countries. They abuse religion don't, don't to oppress people. I don't, to oppress I don't care people. about the dictators. No, you don't so, care. But I what, care. What, there there are Pew survey data. Pew survey data where they have asked Muslims in. America, in the UK, in all of the Muslim countries, do they agree with the, these tenets? One of the things is they asked, should there be, should apostate, or should, I think it was be stoned to death or killed or whatever. The vast majority, like 66 something percent of Muslims and even the, the European countries agreed that they should take and kill apostates for leaving the faith or they should implement Sharia law in these kinds of cases. Like, yes, this is most Muslims interpret the Quran in this way. So even if you think they're wrong, even if you think they've all made this up, they've got it wrong. This is the incorrect interpretation. Most Muslims think this. That means if we adopt Islam worldwide, the vast majority of the world would think this. They, they would have the wrong interpretation of Islam, which means Islam is a bad ideology to implement in the world. Do you know how many secular nations think we should stone apostates? Zero. Do, how, do, do, how many people in secular nations say it's okay to stone anyone for any reason? Zero. There's, there's none. Doesn't doesn't happen. So secular nations here are better because they don't have this problem that a large portion of the people who adopt the ideology think it's okay to stone apostates to death. Okay. Now uh, you you couldn't find a single verse. Okay. I gave you Quran chapter four verse one hundred thirty seven. Indeed, those who believe have believed. Then disbelieved, then believed, then disbelieved, and then increase in disbelief. Of course, it's not disbelief. It's uh, in Quran says kuf. Okay, never will Allah forgive them, nor will He guide them to a way. Okay, there is no anything about kill them, asking us to kill them. Chapter four, verse one hundred thirty-seven. Indeed, those who have believed then disbelieved, then believed. Uh, sorry, this was the 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 same I I read. Okay, chapter. 47 verse 38, here you are, those invite uh, to spend in the cows of Allah, but among you are those who withhold uh, out of uh, greed and whoever withholds uh, only withholds benefit from himself. And Allah is the free of need while you are the needy. And if you turn away, he will replace you with another people then they will not be uh, the like of you. So Allah, there, there are so many verses of Quran and another one, there is no compulsion in religion. I don't religion, care. Okay? Literally you don't care. Matter. Okay, I know that you don't care. You don't care about anything. 
All right. No, no, so no, I don't no, know I do. why there, there's something discussing. I do care about. There's something I care about a lot. It's what is the, the actual data? If people adopt this religion, what happens to the people in that region? How many of them commit more crimes? I don't care what your interpretation right, of okay, the book yes. is. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm making the point. I'm making the point here. So I don't care what your interpretation of the book is or what you think the correct way to do Islam is. I care what happens to the majority of people when they adopt Islam and they adopt female genital mutilation. They adopt Sharia law. They adopt uh, less education of science, more education of religion. They have more crime rates, more rape rates, more... Um, marital rape rates like when people adopt islam they do bad things it's bad like i don't care if you think it's the right islam it doesn't make a difference if you think like, maybe they're just studying it incorrectly it makes no difference because if they adopt islam they do more bad things you know what doesn't have that effect secularism people adopt secularism they do less bad things i don't care if it's the correct version or the correct interpretation it makes no difference we can just look at the data how many people do these crimes in secular nations versus muslim nations muslim nations are worse problem solved we know which is better i told you from beginning that this is all about the jungle rules and when you go to latin america you see that crime is much higher than uh, most muslim countries on this planet okay you cannot even go on the street. Uh, I would. I didn't make research, but for example, South Africa. I know it's a Christian country, but I don't understand it is your so point. dangerous. No, my point is that it doesn't have anything to do with Christianity or or Islam. It has to do with the economy. It has to do with the jungle rule that some people have one one percent of the world population have one hundred ten trillion dollars while hundreds of millions of people live on one dollar a day okay and they do all I, bad I things partially, to survive, i partially okay? agree with you so i okay? partially agree that uh poverty Injustice, is a large yeah. one, one sec one sec so i partially agree that poverty is one of the biggest factors in causing uh crime rates and all things but you know what gets people out of poverty Science, science does this. And you know which okay. ones have the highest science educations? The, the, the secular ones, the more secular, the more, the more you go into non-religious, the more science education you have. The reason Islam is behind everyone else is because they don't educate women and women don't educate their kids to become scientists. They educate them on religious garbage, which wastes their time. So the fact that religion is such a high focus in Muslim countries is the problem keeping them poor. If you got more into science, like every other country did that were secular, you wouldn't be poor anymore, at least as poor. So yeah, poverty is a problem. And a lot of the cause of poverty is Islam. Like literally, as I mentioned earlier, the reason Islam is not the world leader in technology right now is because they banned math and trade in the 1200s when they were the world leaders. So yeah, uh, poverty is a problem. And the reason they're in poverty is because of Islam. Okay, can I now uh, uh, tell you that before Islam entered uh, my home country, Iran, uh, uh, we didn't have scientists, we didn't have, uh, you know, poets. After uh, Islam entered uh, in my home country, because uh, at that time, education belonged only to rich, uh, uh, you know, classes, and poor classes didn't have the right to study. After Islam entered uh, Iran and Persia, uh, everybody started to, you know, educate themselves, and uh, we have a lot of poets, we have a lot of uh, scientists like Ibn Sina, um, and Zakaria Razi, and so on. And um, uh, I have to tell you that now, for example, I'm following a Muslim country, uh, organization that women are high, highly educated, women are leaders, okay? So don't say Islam does this Islam. There is a backward, uh, you know, version of Islam, I understand it, I accept it, but uh, interpretation of Islam that uh, some uh, scholars, businessmen follow that, but there are Muslims who interpret Islam and Quran in the right way, and we believe in equality between men and women, and we believe that everybody have the equal rights, okay, both men and women. And uh, uh, if it hasn't happened yet, unfortunately, it's because of the, the Western countries, and uh, they didn't want that the Middle East becomes, you know, become developed, and they, uh, they, they try to destroy this great, beautiful Muslim organization, because this organization is going to bring this godfather of international terrorism, which is Iranian regime, okay? And they didn't want that they uh, bring down this regime. They bombed them in Iraq in 2003. They forced them to move now to Albania, but they are fighting uh, and they are trying to bring down this regime. One day they will do that and they, 
the Middle East will become peaceful and develop and become democratic. <laughs> yes, don't laugh. Yes, I know that you try to stop Wait, When them. was it peaceful I, before Western integration? Like, like before any of the Western countries got there, was it ever oh, peaceful? Oh, or? how about uh, Europe? Was it peaceful before? No, it has always everywhere, everywhere on this planet. Right, so it Islam doesn't actually continued. make it peaceful. It, it make it peaceful if people understand it, yes, because there is no com <laughs> compulsion. When has that ever occurred? So, so so it will occur. Let me put yes. it this way. I know that it hasn't no occurred. One, yes. No one will ever in interpret Islam the way you do. It will never be the majority in Islam. Never going to happen. Your personal subjective interpretation, the, way the right Islam should be, will I, never be the case. What we see are, now is going to be negative. the case. You are wait, negative. Wait, wait. I'm, I don't know. I don't know why you're talking over me. I don't know why you're talking over me. You haven't even heard my point yet. So the fact that you have a subjective interpretation, which very few Muslims actually adhere to, uh, and you think that your correct interpretation should be implemented, makes no difference. No one, no one else in the Muslim world we cares. They all, have, they all have their own personal interpretations. We, we which, wait, wait, stop interrupting. Stop interrupting. They, all people in Muslim in the Muslim world, like in all religions, have their own personal subjective interpretations. What matters is, is what is the most likely thing to happen when people adopt the religion what is the most common interpretations of the religion the most common interpretation of islam are extremely violent and backwards and less scientific so it's a bad ideology it doesn't matter if you think well if we all adopted the perfect version of islam that literally no one accepts then all of the world would be better that's a nice hypothesis that's never been tested when we actually adopt islam in large portions of the, pl the planet we see lots of crime Lots of death, lots of rape, lots of human rights violations. We don't ever see this perfect little Islamic society you think is going to happen in your own personal subjective interpretation. It doesn't occur. What we do see is the best societies are the ones that adopt secularism, humanism. We can literally see it happening. We can see as people become more secular, they become better people, less crime, less poverty, more compassion, uh, more acceptance of the LGBT community, community. Definitely not something that's going to happen in Islam. Um, less violent, less murder, less theft, less rape, every mess, every possible metric, we see it getting better in secular nations. The fact that you have a personal subjective interpretation of Islam you think will make the world better doesn't matter because no one else in Islam agrees. Okay, now can I talk? Yeah. First of all, first of all, uh, just because it hasn't happened, it doesn't mean that it, it will never happen. We are, uh, uh, in the past, we were not educated. People were not educated. There was no such a media and education, okay? Now we are educating ourselves, media and so on. So we are uh, coming to that point. And I said that uh, we, are, uh, we are millions, okay? We are trying to, uh, to do that. And unfortunately, uh, we, we are stopped somehow. They try to stop us, uh, uh, <clears throat> those powers who don't want to see peace and stability in the Middle East because they can sell hundreds of billions of dollars weapons to the Middle East. They, they need conflicts and they need cheap oil and so on. So they don't want this, uh, to see this uh, uh, beautiful, uh, uh, you know, democratic region. But uh, <clears throat> another thing is that uh, I said that all these problems is because of the jungle and the rules and that you allows you to become, uh, you know, richer by killing, uh, killing millions of people. Secularism, how secularism can solve the uh, problem that is caused by tobacco. Can you please explain for me? Five million people die every year on this planet because of tobacco companies want to become richer. Can you give me uh, the, the, you know, the good um, uh, you know, system, a way that can get uh, you know, this uh, problem fixed? Can you yes, we're literally yes, we're literally doing it. Like Australia has implemented like uh, well, pictures on the sides of of uh, cigarette cases that are showing okay. lung cancer, and they're making them a dark green. And this has decreased okay. sales and consumption of cigarettes by almost half in the past ten years. So yeah, we're literally doing that. We're literally okay. decreasing the rate of death by tobacco um, by magnitudes each year, thanks to secular nations using science and what makes people not. Uh, wants to buy the packages. So like we've done research into what is the most displeasing color and it's like a dark green shade. And so they make all of the colors, all of the, the colors of the boxes, all the dark green shade, which decreased the sales of the tobacco things. So yes, we're making legislation in, in the secular governments in order to decrease sales, which decrease the cost of, of the deaths to tobacco. We're also increasing scientific um, discoveries in the curing of cancer, which decreased the deaths of tobacco. So yeah, we're, we're solving these problems literally every day in the secular nation. Islam isn't solving them. Science is. Okay, can I now respond to that? 
First right. of all, uh, I, I heard that um, there was uh, there were some feminist uh, organization who complained to the United Nations that these co tobacco companies, they make, uh, uh, you know, advertisement that uh, cigarette make you thin and then sexy. So they target women to uh, to increase their cell. OK, uh, yes. And then there is another thing is alcohol killing also millions of people no the the, the solution is my friend is that uh, you get rid of the system of the jungle that people can get billionaires become billionaires by selling cigarettes okay if they cannot sell it i promise you tomorrow they will close down they will not they don't uh, they will not produce a single uh, you know pack of cigarette just the, yes, the, crime the, is not a thing. There is zero no. crime. No one sells cocaine in America. No, look, not, every every problem clearly, will disappear. Clearly. Every pro problem will disappear. These uh, cart, uh, vapor cartels, they will <laughs> not sell. Will disappear. They, they will not. I tell you that. They will not. This is the, in Islam. Islam says that the, the source is one source. Okay, it's, uh, you know, describe it as Satan. But uh, it is the system, the jungle system that allows that 1% uh, have 110 trillion dollars while while hundreds of millions of people live on one dollar a day and they don't stop there they want to become richer and richer so what they do they create conflict in different places to sell their weapons they uh, you know they only human trafficking is 150 billion dollars industry so no problem will disappear if as long as we have we are living in the jungle with the this jungle system so that yeah, yeah, because Islam doesn't have any of those problems significantly worse than the Western nations. Sorry, Islam. What? Yeah, 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 because Islam doesn't have those problems like opium. No one, no one illegally sells opium in any Islamic country. No, they are, they, they sell. They sell. There are no rich warlords who take advantage uh, of the system in Islam. Nope, never happened. Z zero, zero cases of that in every country. Tijam, you you don't understand. I said that they don't follow the Islam. They follow the rules of the jungle <laughs> as well. They are not Muslim. They follow the rules of the jungle. Okay, okay, the okay. okay. So, so, satan so, satanic system is all in, in everywhere on this planet is ruling yeah, the planet. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so we're going to adopt Islam and all of the true Muslims aren't going to commit crimes, but the amount of crime rate is going to go up. There's going to be more crime rate if we ever adopt Islam because most people just won't be following it. Uh, great strategy. This is, this is a great, we should just implement Islam and most people won't follow it and the rate of crime will go up. But the ones that do- I didn't understand what you said. I didn't understand what you said. If they okay. adopt Islam, what happens? The, the rate of crime goes up? Why? Yes. Why? In every country. I said that the, if you want to truly adopt Islam is that to get rid of this uh, jungle system, okay? Because the problem is from the jungle system that you get rich by selling drugs. You get rich by, you know, uh, selling okay. your body. Okay. You, you get Once, rich by human trafficking. Tell you, you get what, rich by, yes. If you can implement this in a Muslim country, get a Muslim country to do all of these things and solve okay. all of these problems, then yes. you will have a legitimate argument. But you yeah, don't. Exactly. All of the Muslim right. countries are worse I understand. than other things. I understand. Uh, TJ, I understand that one, okay? And I said that we are going towards that, that world, okay? We are small now. Uh, we have created that one. It's a very small city and uh, no crime happens there. It's a beautiful Ethiopia, it's perfect, but it's a small city and we are trying to, you know, to uh, make it uh, on everywhere on this planet. And then it take time. I don't say it, it take 10 years, 20 years. It might take hundreds of years, all right? But we are starting, we are getting there, all right? I can, if I could share with you uh, these people, brave people who are, fighting against these, uh, you know, terrorist uh, regime in Iran, and they want to uh, bring democracy and freedom, and they are loved by Christian, by Jews, by atheists, by everybody. Everybody loved them, okay? Thousands of European parliamentarians, hundreds of American senators, uh, you know, support them, okay, to bring down Iranian fascist regime because they say that they are the legit legitimate alternative to this fascist regime and they they are muslim they want to bring democracy freedom equality between men and women women are on the top in that organization it is called people's mujahideen organization of iran so we are uh, we are millions but we are not hundreds of millions i know but 
it we are on the, on the right track. Okay. Great. So, so I'm, I'm happy for you. I totally agree. I think that I would be all for your version of Islam, moderate Islam to Thank take you. over and replace all of the majority of Islam. And I think that's a good thing. I'm totally for that. And I think that would Thank definitely you. bring a lot of benefits to every to the single world. country, but uh, that's not what most people interpret Islam to be. I understand. So, I understand. And even if we did that, there's still already a better alternative. There's still already a better ideology, which does all of those things to a better extent which ideology, which one? Better? Which one? Humanism. Secular, secular humanism does all of those things better already. Uh, okay, I, I asked you about this, uh, the, the solution, but uh, I know that secular humanism doesn't have that one. Okay? It does. You said that, uh, I told you secular you said humanism that, uh, is solving uh, all the problems. Uh, it's you just said the one doing uh, the work. Yeah, you said that to put, uh, you know, to make it black. I said that it is not, it is not the right way. The right way is to get rid of the source which those companies will close down tomorrow, okay? They will not produce a, a single pack of cigarettes. The tobacco company, uh, sorry, the drug cartels, they will not produce a, a single gram of uh, drug. When, for yeah. example, yeah. for yeah. example, I heard, Farmers I heard of, what you said, but again, Farmers of crime is a thing. So, so even if you shut down all of the tobacco no, industry- No, I didn't say shut still, down. Wait, wrong, wait, wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Wrong. Right. So people will still create tobacco and still sell it wrong. even if you shut them down and they will TJ, still make TJ, TJ. Stop, 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 stop interrupting. So the, the correct solution is the way the secular nations are doing it through legislation, through working together, through voting people in the office. That is the correct way to do it. Not just to simply outright ban everything we don't like. That's a bad idea. Some people like cigarettes. Some people choose to take cigarettes and that's fine. They have a right to do that. Just banning okay. it would be wrong. The correct solution is to do what the secular nations are doing which is to give people the option they can choose to do it if they want but then to dis to de-incentivize it so they can choose okay. not to by making it showing the cancer on the boxes by making it a bad color that way people have the freedom to choose and they can do it if they want to but they have the knowledge that it has a bad impact that is the correct solution the secular nations are doing the correct thing and the islamic solution that you're proposing is not the correct thing tj please uh, when i say something don't change it i didn't say shut it down I said that if we get rid of the source, which is you cannot become rich by selling cigarette, okay? Take away from the, uh, that system, the money system, what I'm going to say is the money system that, okay, you can produce it for free. No tobacco company will, uh, you know, continue to produce. Uh, you say to give choice, then let's sell heroin and uh, cocaine in the stores and give choice yes. to people, okay? Yes. Let's give I'm to for the, that. Right. I'm all for okay. that. I'm thinking that we should legalize <laughs> yeah, drugs. But, like there but, are many countries uh, like yes. even, Uruguay did that. Even, yes, we should do that. Even, even secular countries, they do not agree with that because it will kill, uh, you know, I have made a documentary movie, by the way, uh, about alcohol. I shot it in um, the, the, the movie in, um, you know, in Russia and in Sweden. I compare Sweden to Russia, that in Russia you can, you know, uh, everybody can buy alcohol anywhere in, in Russia, but the, the, you know, the death rate is hundreds of thousands of people in Russia, while in Sweden it's just few thousand, because in Sweden they have limited it. They, uh, you cannot buy alcohol everywhere. It's just special liquor uh, stores. So uh, Sweden doing it, uh, you know, much better. So if you make it available, if uh, then uh, millions of people will die. So they stop. They try if to, if they, people they, choose to drink and they choose to get alcohol poisoning, that's their choice. They have the right uh, to make that right. choice. Banning it is the wrong thing to do. Like if people choose to smoke, even knowing that they could get lung cancer and knowing they could die, they still have the right to have the ability right, to yes. choose for themselves that they can smoke. That is the okay. morally better position. That's why the secular nations are better here. They are correct to say, if you want to take the risk that you can get lung cancer and you choose to take cigarettes, you have that right. You have the freedom to make that choice. The secular nations are morally correct to give people the choice that they want to take cigarettes. You are incorrect just banning them from doing it. I said that I'm not going to ban anything. I told you how many times I have to say, TJ, well, I say that- Banning get money? Rid of, no, I said that get rid of that system which allows you to become billionaire by producing cigarettes or producing drugs or producing weapons. And so you want to it. ban money? No, I want to ban the system that uh, we, I said, I read it, uh, which, a human which, system. Which system? Like capitalism? No, the, uh, capitalism is the, the, the devil. 
<laughs> okay. Yes, capitalism has saved millions of lives. So it's not All the right, devil. Like, okay, which, yes, okay. which system? So, which system do you want to get rid of? Equality. Down? Equality. A system that we share everything with each other. Okay. You, you want it to get rid of system. equality? Sorry? Which system do you want to get rid of? Like, I, I'm not following. The, what system? I want to get rid of this, the capitalism. You want to and, get rid of... Uh, no, I don't want to get rid of. I want to, you know, I want that people... Uh, it is uh, uh, God wants that people live equal, share everything with each other. Okay, that's why we stand towards uh, Mecca every day and say, "Show me the right way." What happens in Mecca is equality. People are equal in that when we go to Hajj, we dress equal, everybody equal, no rich, no poor. We say to God, "I accept it," and then we reject the opposite of it, which is inequality, which is the symbol of that is Satan. Okay. I say Satan is the capitalism. So the source of all problems is the capitalist system, okay? That allows the companies, those tobacco companies to become billionaire by selling cigarettes, okay? So if they cannot sell the, the, their cigarette, okay? We get rid of that so system, then they will not produce it. I don't say ban it, okay? I said that let's share everything with each other, okay? Equally love one another. I don't want to see hundreds of millions of people go on one dollar a day and, you know, go hungry because some people want to have Ferrari, Lamborghini, Bugatti, and so on. It's such a luxury life. I'm against this, uh, you know, jungle system. I, I believe that I, um, you know, we are not human. We are animals. I've said it from, uh, from the, uh, in the beginning that God wants us to be human, okay? And a human is the one who sacrificed for others for his own kind animal so you think that are you do you think that adolf hitler was a human and you are a human i don't think so yes i don't we're if, both if he humans was, and uh, humans are also animals like yes we're both no, humans no. okay uh, what is animal animal is a form or what can you tell me what is animal uh animal is a kind of uh, reproductive uh it's a way of life animal is a reproductive eukaryote with uh with spinal cord i think that, that's animal Okay, now uh, look. So when I say animal, do you come to a form? Do I, when I say animal, do you come to a form? Do you imagine a form? Uh, a form? Yes, like uh, when I say horse, you come to a form. A ho horse is a, you know, a, a, a animal, an animal that goes on four legs, you know, it's big. I haven't said red horse. When I say red horse, uh, you come to the color of that animal as well, okay? So horse is a, is, a, is a form, all right? But animal is not a form, it's a way of life. Selfishness, me, just me. I don't care about anyone else. That's animal for me. Human is also a form. When I say human, is not a form, it's a way of life. It's when you sacrifice yourself for uh, your own kind. You love others, uh, you know, as you, Jesus says as well, love your neighbor as you love yourself, love one another, uh, okay? So human is also for me a way of life. I have heard in all nations, I think is this, that that person is a real human or that person is a real animal. So if uh, uh, human is a form like horse, have you ever heard that somebody say that horse is a real horse? No, there is no such a thing. Yes, horse I've literally heard that statement. Many times. Horse is a horse, dog is a dog, but there is real human, there is unreal human, okay? Well, so, so I, I get what you're trying to say. When I hear animal, I think of the biological evolutionary definition. When they get human, I think of the biological evolutionary definition, but I understand what you're trying to say. But so back to the point, uh, capitalism is not evil. Capitalism has saved billions of lives. Is it perfect? Okay. No, but capitalism does work. Capitalism works better well, than socialism. Well, why is so, so one, one sec, one sec, one sec. No, one sec. can you explain billions of people how? By producing economic uh, sustainability. So capitalism generates a uh, desire for people to work and the desire to people to work produces goods and those goods can then um, fill people's houses. The reason most poor people have TVs and cars and radios and microwaves is because someone built the technology and sold it to make money. And they were inspired to build more companies because they could make more money. And so they expanded and built companies all over the world and grew technology and wanted to cut costs so they could make more technology. And so the incentives of capitalism and making money have inspired people to produce technology that has spanned the entire globe. Capitalism is a good thing. It's not perfect, but it is a good force 
to making technological progress in the world. And it has done more than communism or socialism or any of the other alternatives. And that's why money and capitalism are, even though they're not perfect, they are good forces to make progress in the world. And so ab abolishing capitalism is, is a different topic, a different debate topic, but uh, not a good idea. Okay, so first of all, um, uh, it's another to topic I know, okay, but from the beginning I said it. Another thing is that you say that if capitalism didn't exist, then we would uh, still go uh, by, you know, uh, by a horse and donkey. That's absolutely wrong because capitalism, capitalism has stopped humanity from developing Second World War, First World War. Uh, only my country those had nothing to do with capitalism. Uh, uh, nothing to do with capitalism, of course. No. Yeah. Only my country, only my country could be second Japan and you know, uh, uh, you know, help Japan. the humanity, help the humanity much more than instead now spreading terrorism and you know uh, conflict in the region. If capitalism didn't bring our uh, democratic prime minister in 1953, okay. So capitalism has uh, you know done a lot of damage. Only uh, you know trying to steal uh, information from each other instead sharing with each other. This is capitalism. If we shared information with each other, even during this coronavirus, okay, if they shared information with each other, then they would reach this, uh, what is it, uh, the, the, the vaccine much faster than, uh, you know, than they did because they tried, uh, of course, I heard that in this pandemic, they tried to, to share with each other, but mostly, mostly they don't share anything with each other. They keep it for their own companies and they even try to uh, sabotage it, each other so that they, uh, the other company, you know, uh, uh, come to this, uh, that technology. Or they, they had to share it, they wouldn't make it. So, so the whole point here is that the reason that they keep it to themselves and the reason that they can gain profit is the whole reason that they're doing it in the first place. If they had to share yes. everything, nobody would make it. So the fact that people can keep it to themselves and make profit on their end is one of the reasons that people do the work to discover things because they know that they're going to make profit if they do the, get the discovery. So yes, yeah, I know it's not perfectly moral. We should just be like, just give every cure to vaccines for free, but that doesn't, people won't do the work to discover them if they had to give it away for free. The reason they do the work to discover it is so that they make money. So even though it isn't a perfect system, it does correspond to our moral nature that we want profit and things so we will do work if we get paid but if we aren't getting paid we won't do work and so the capitalist system is more likely to encourage work to get done and, and right. so it, i didn't say that we would not uh we'd still be in the stone age if we didn't have capitalism capitalism uh accentuates growth it makes it faster and that's why it's good it doesn't it doesn't mean we can't grow without capitalism it just makes it faster and guys so, that yeah, so, that is actually the open discussion. I want to thank both the perfect Dawa and Tija for joining us. We are about to move into the Q&A, but I'm actually going to hand it back over to our interlocutors for their closing statement. Tija, the floor is all yours. Yeah, it seemed like most of his argument was is that he has a particular view of Islam, which he thinks is the correct Islam, and everyone else is using the incorrect Islam, and therefore... He thinks if we spread his version of Islam, we'll see a benefit to the world. But most people don't interpret Islam in his way. So if we did spread Islam, they would interpret it in the other ways, which are far more harmful. And I don't see any evidence of his way being able to be uh, successfully convinced the majority of Muslims to adopt his interpretation. So most likely if we did adopt Islam, they'd interpret it in the more uh vicious ways and so i would not advocate for adopting islam i would definitely advocate for adopting secular humanism which does not have the same problems all right uh, i would like uh, to say as well that that's uh, I, I said for, on my opening statement that uh, it is beyond most people's imagination uh, we are living in this uh, uh, you know dimension and that's kind of another dimension of course it's uh, because we have been living in this jungle too long so it is uh, most uh, probably very impossible for many people to see something beyond that and i said uh, to you tj uh, that uh, t t jump <laughs> sorry I, tom yeah and that um, i'm not alone we are millions and um, that interpretation is not just mine. Uh, we are millions and we are uh, starting to understand because of the technology, because of education, we are trying to understand uh, uh, people 
For example, I, when something I don't understand in Quran, I contact a fellow Muslim who is Arab and uh, he's also educated as well. I get help from him that, uh, can you please help me with this verse of Quran, for example? And there are small details, he helped me. So in the past, I wouldn't have this opportunity. Now uh, we have this opportunity to talk to each other and to consider with each other that this is uh, cannot be right and that cannot be right and so on. So uh, we are starting to wake up definitely and uh, we will reach that. Uh, this is a promise from God in Islam that one day it's gonna happen. It is in Abrahamic religion actually that one day the world will come to that. Uh, uh, we have Messiah, all of us, that one day the world will be filled with justice and equality. And uh, yes, uh, I uh, was going to say that uh, you said um, that uh, People will not do anything for if their money doesn't exist. That's of course. That's uh, when we are uh, want to live like animals. Okay, in this jungle, yes, we don't do anything uh, for money. But if we follow the command of God, uh, Allah, uh, then He will reward us. We do everything for the reward, and He reward us with the heaven. And that's why um, the, we do even more. Okay, we do much more uh, beyond your imagination. And uh, I have the proof that this organization that I'm following, they are Muslim, they work 24 hours. Uh, they have been fighting 43 years now and uh, they don't get a single dollar for their work. Sometimes they don't sleep in several days. They just uh, have a rest when they are driving somewhere in the car or something, you know, a little bit and so on when they, they have to. And um, they have shown that um, uh, religion has a great power that can, you know, make people do pos possible the impossible, okay? Yes. That was all. Woo -hoo, thank you both. Oh, let me make sure the screen. I want to now remind everyone we are going to be moving into our Q&A section. This is a chance for you to send in your questions to either or both of our interlocutors, T-Jump and the Perfect Dawa. We also have Super Chats turned on. So remember, folks, don't forget to like and subscribe. But with that, let the fun begin. We have 1990 uh, in Malaysian from Azira Schizophrenia. Question for T-Jump, how do you refute someone who says physics shows the authority of God over us? Is there any evidence for that? Like, it's like saying potatoes show the, the superiority of the potato monster over us. Like you'd have to actually provide evidence or something like just an, an assertion that physics exists. Therefore, God isn't actually uh, evidence of anything. Question, $5 super chat from Richard Head says, Flipper died for your fins. Thank you, Richard. Uh, 40 from Pudu Dawa, are you against Iran and why are you in, I think that's Mech, so maybe Mecca, M-E-K? M-E-K. Uh, no, <laughs> yes. I'm Iranian, I cannot be against Iran. I'm against the fascist, terrorist, ISIS regime of Iran. And uh, MEK is um, um, a great organization that has been fighting two different dictators, the past dictator and the present dictator. And they have uh, support among thousands of uh, uh, parliamentarian in Europe and senators in USA just a few months ago. Um, um, what is it, um, uh, Trump's, vice president and foreign minister, both of them were supporting MEK and uh, hundreds of other senators and, uh, you know, parliamentarian and uh, <clears throat> uh, seculars, Marxist, uh, Christian Jews who love this organization and do, uh, you know, everything for this organization to bring down the fascist dictator regime of Iran. So they are uh, great people and uh, I haven't, I don't know anyone you know, better than uh, these people <clears throat> who, who have left everything for, for their, their people, sacrifice for their people and their freedom. 
uh, super chat coming in from Pudu again. Dawa, what is Quran nine twenty nine? I have to. Dash twenty nine. I have to uh, because I don't memorize it, so I have to read it. Uh, maybe I can. Uh, if you have, to, maybe you can go another question, and I will find this uh, verse. Sure. Okay. For for maybe TJ so, trying so to far. find one for TJ. Go to normal question. Um, question to TJ, if possible, did you mean Surah two dash two one four? The orders apostates to be killed. Quote whoever so apostatized. From his religion, let him die for it, and he is an infidel, uh, unquote. Well, I don't care about any of the specific quotes from the Quran. I care about what is the interpretation of people who are Muslim. So if we're asking which is the better for society, we need to know how do Muslims act, and if they believe that is a part of Islam, whether or not it actually says so, I don't, I don't care what the sir is. I care how do people who are Muslims uh, act and believe is kosher to act in Islam. So I don't care about the service. All I care about is what do most Muslims do if they adopt Islam, and that's what's indicative of that Islam is bad, is the fact that most Muslims think that that is correct, regardless of what the Quran says. Who cares what the Quran says? I don't know how Muslims act. All right, now I um, I can answer that question. You want me? Yeah, sure. uh, Yes, chapter 3, verse 7 says that Quran has precise and unspecific verses. And the true meaning of the unspecific verses of Quran is known only by Allah and those firm in knowledge. So how they, those firm in knowledge understand the true meaning of those unspecific verses of Quran is that they be, put them beside other verses of Quran. So chapter 29, verse 46, because chapter 29, ver, uh, sorry, chapter 9, verse 29 was saying about uh, Christian and Jews uh, that if those who uh, don't, you know, um, believe in Allah and uh, the, the last messenger fight them and, uh, you know, uh, and so on. So chapter 29, verse 46 says that, and do not argue with the people of the scripture except in the way that is best, except for those who commit injustice among them and say, we believe in the in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you and our God and your God is one and we are Muslims uh, in submission to him. Chapter two, verse 62, those who believe and those who Jew are Jews and Christians and Sabians, whoever believes in Allah and the last day and do righteous good, uh, righteous good deeds shall have their rewards uh, with their Lord on them shall no be fear, be no fear, nor shall they grieve. So there are many other verses of Quran that talks about Jews and Christian. So people take one uh, verse out of context and say that, oh, look here, Allah says this. But you see that in other verses, Allah says, uh, uh, you know, how to deal with them. It is all about those who fight you. In Islam, there is not no compulsion in religion and you cannot fight non-combatters, okay? Only those who attack you and as long as they fight you, okay? If you want, I can bring up the, the verses as well. As long as they fight you, when they stop fighting you, you have to stop fighting too because Allah does not like those who start the fight. This is clear verses of Quran. And then I, I will uh, have to say that uh, after this right away on my channel, I go uh, live and those who have more questions, please welcome and join me on my channel right away after this. And I can talk to you uh, longer there. That's right. If you like what either of our interlocutors say, both of their channels are linked in the description below. $5 super chat from Mr. Monster. Destroying the idols in Mecca was an act of terror, was it not? All right, uh, it is. Um, it wasn't in Mecca. It was in uh, Kaaba, and Kaaba was built by uh, Prophet uh, Abraham, and for a great reason. Uh, that uh, I was talking about that that uh, God wants us to, you know, uh, want to guide us out of the jungle, and that Mecca is um, and the most, uh, you know, uh, the most important uh, place in Islam. Is like that uh, somebody comes and uh, you know 
build something in your house uh, that you don't believe and you don't want it there, then you want to throw it out, okay? So that uh, is not, uh, you know, uh, it's not a crime, it's nothing bad uh, because, for example, you change a mosque that people, Muslim have built and some somebody come and occupy it and build, uh, you know, idols there, or put idols there, then you have the right to, when you take it back, you have the right to remove them because it is it was yours from beginning you you built it there okay so you and there is no compulsion any uh, in islam and you can have your ideals anywhere else that's uh, that's up to you the uh, your judgment is with uh, with god not with me five dollar super chat from zuexel death for apostasy is very well established in the hadith not the quran it is a consensus among all major scholars throughout history. Okay, it, um, uh, yes, <clears throat> many scholars um, now uh, they uh, reject it. Okay, and uh, it goes. You have to first know uh, it doesn't because uh, it is like this that uh, every Muslim knows that uh, when I die, I will be questioned by God, not those scholars. If I go and kill an apostate, okay, and Allah asks me why you killed that apostate, I cannot say that the hadith said it and then those scholars, they, they agree with that. He will punish me because I went against Quran. Quran says no compulsion in religion. Hadith cannot come and say, and Quran, I read for you several verses of Quran that says that their punishment, those who reject, uh, those who believe and then the apostates, yeah, and leave Islam, uh, they're their punishment is with Allah, not with me, okay? And Allah doesn't say anywhere in Quran to go and kill uh, apostates. Uh, in fact, it says uh, in many verses that, the, okay, you have no right to kill innocent people or non-combatters and uh, no compulsion in religion. I can read for you many, many verses of Quran that goes against that hadith. So any hadith goes against Quran is fabricated. Whoever say that, okay? Thank you. And back to back super chats from Zwexel. Killing for hypostasy is hypocrisy because they are killing people for doing the exact same thing that they themselves encourage others to do. Was it for me or? I am not a hundred percent sure. It doesn't have yeah. a uh, someone tagged. Either one of you feel free to respond though. I can read again. Killing for apostasy is hypocrisy because they are killing people for doing the exact same thing that they themselves encourage others to do. DJ, you want to say something? Because uh, I don't know if it is a question. Yeah, it's just a comment essentially saying that um, if you have a rule that you're not allowed to change your faith and their whole idea is to convert people to Islam by changing their faith and it's Hypocritical, hypocrisy because they are outlawing the thing that they're trying to do, which is sort of true um, in general. No, and I said that, uh, of course, there is no such a law in Islam. I can, uh, if you go to the uh, next uh, uh, question, I will find the verses uh, again and read for them. Sure. I think I do have one for T-Jump. $5 from Corey Garoski. T. Jump, how important would you say is science and skepticism within secular humanism? Uh, it's probably like the most important thing. Most people like worship science essentially in skepticism. It's it's one of the most foundational tenets of the the ideology. Okay, let let me read for the you this uh, chapter sixteen verse one hundred six. Whoever disbelieves in Allah after his belief. So this is about apostates. Except for those, for one who is forced to uh, renounce his religion while his heart is uh, secure in faith. But those who willingly open their, uh, their breast to disbelieve, open them is wrath from Allah and for them is a great punishment. And there are so many other verses. So there is nowhere in Quran says that their punishment is by me or by, you know, some, uh, you know, uh, some uneducated Muslim from a far remote village of Afghanistan or somewhere else, you know, goes and kill people because they, they disbelieve. 
There is no such a thing in Quran. We have no right to judge people because these people can come to Islam tomorrow or next year or uh, you know in ten years. So Allah says in Quran that they're, they're you know He gives. Um, uh, let me find the, the verse for you uh, very fast. Uh, in chapter sixteen, verse. 60, uh, 61, if Allah were to punish people immediately for their wrongdoing, he would not have left a single living being on earth, but he delays them for an appointed term. And when their term uh, arrives, they cannot delay it for a moment, uh, nor can they advance it. So Allah says here that it is his decision when he can take out someone, it's not my decision. So he's not going to punish people immediately. And I have no right to punish people immediately either. Okay, because they have the right to repent in Islam. So we have no right to kill anybody for, for anything except for uh, you know, self-defense. And that's as the last option, not the first option. Thank you. $2 super chat from Joe Schwartz. Can each one of you say one nice thing about each other? I'm actually a big fan of his version of Islam. I think the moderate version of Islam is something that should be very lauded and praised because I think that the moderate version of Islam is a huge improvement over the majority version of Islam. So I think that his work is very important and I am very happy to support his work and his interpretation of Islam. I think it should definitely be more uh, accepted and interpreted by uh, secular nations, more accepted his version than the contemporary one. Thank you very much. And um, I um, say also that uh, as long as you um, try to help um, humanity, which I am happy that you at least believe in you know, secular humanism, not that you don't believe in anything. Okay, that's good as well. And as long as you do good things and then you try to uh, help people, uh, that's a great thing. And uh, we, we are brothers in uh, creation, as Islam has taught me, that we, we might have disagreement and we have to help each other, yes. And uh, I, I would be more than glad to uh, you know, work with you than with some extremist Muslim who want to kill <laughs> you, know, you because you disbelieve or because uh, you are uh, someone else's uh, you know, apostate. So uh, I, I prefer you over them because at least you are not going to kill people, you know, unjustly. All right. Thank you, both of you. 40 rupees from Pudu again. Dawa, why Allah want to test us? Um, it says no Muslim ends me yet. I think he's saying he's not a Muslim yet, but why does Allah want to test us? I don't think it's a, uh, as a t I don't take it as a test. I take it as a, you know, he wanted to, uh, he created uh, this uh, animal, but he gave us the ability to understand. So, and he wanted us to develop to, uh, to that human nature or that nature, I say human way of life by his guidance. So it is, uh, it is kind of a, a work. I cannot say it's, it's a test because you cannot test uh, you know, monkeys, for example, because they don't understand anything. So when we didn't understand in the past, we were like monkeys or we had little knowledge, then that wouldn't be a test. So Allah wanted uh, to, you know, to guide us, to help us to develop. He, he waited billions of years for the moment that we develop like today. And then, of course, we need more uh, to develop and uh, he tried to guide us. I don't see it as a test, okay? I see it as a, as a beautiful picture. He had the power to create this picture and he, he did it. And uh, for me, that's a great picture that he's, uh, he's painting that um, uh, this selfish animal, he changed it to, to something that uh, is better than angels. And he sacrificed himself for his own kind or his own belief, okay? Thank you. Five dollars super chat from Zargos. T jump asked the perfect Dawa about the extreme pedo with prepubescence in sixty-five four 
and 4-34, uh, quote, wife beating and sexual slavery. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let me uh, let me answer that. There is no uh, uh, that verse doesn't talk about uh, you know pubescent girls. It's talking about women who haven't seen uh, you know menstruation. It is in the chapter women. It's not in the chapter girl. Uh, Al Nisa means women. Okay. So those who have translated or interpreted in that way. They just have gone uh, after that fabricated hadith because it says that uh, your wives and their period, uh, waiting period is three months. And for those who haven't seen a menstruation, it doesn't say girls or, or who haven't reached, for example, age of menstruation. And then about the wife beating, let me uh, tell you that also. Chapter 434 says that, first of all, this is a, uh, Quranic verses have come to solve problems, okay? And <clears throat> this was a problem. Wife beating was a problem. If Quran was for beating wives, if Quran wanted people beat their wives, then he wouldn't, Allah wouldn't send a, a verse to uh, ask people to beat their wife because people were doing that. Women, they were their slaves. Women were not human beings. In uh, just check uh, during uh, lockdown in Mexico, within a few months, 1,000 women were killed in domestic problems in 21st century. So Allah didn't need to send uh, a verse say that to men to beat their wives. They were doing it. Only if they didn't do that, then he wanted them to beat their wives, then he would send a verse and say, oh, why you don't beat your wife? You have to beat your wife. So this, is, this doesn't make sense at all. The verse says that, uh, men are providers uh, of women by what Allah has given one over the other and what they spend from their wealth. So righteous women are devotedly guarding in the absence, uh, so husband's absence, what Allah would have them guard. But those wives from whom you fear uh, arrogance, first advise them, then if they persist, forsake them in bed, and finally leave them. But if they change their ways, seek no means against them, surely Allah is the highest, the greatest. So next chapter, chap uh, sorry, next verse, chapter four, verse 35, explain that Allah says, leave them, because that strike, I will tell you also, has been used in Quran many times. The next verse says that, and in case you fear split between the two, wife and husband, then send forth a judge from his family and a judge from her family. So not only he has the right to decide, but she has also the right to decide to come back or not after he left her, okay? Allah will uh, case uh, cause them to reach an agreement between them. Surely Allah is all alone. Chapter 4, one, uh, 128. If a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband, there is no blame on that. This is now for women, okay? Women also have right if they have uh, their husband, uh, you know, uh, neglect them, okay? Uh, blame on their, um, sorry, either of them if they seek fair settlement, which is uh, best. Chapter 33, verse 28 to 31, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, sorry, Allah is talking to Prophet Muhammad uh, about his wife. And all these verses, uh, Allah is talking about his wife. There is no single word to say that, oh, Muhammad, beat your wife, okay? And chapter 66, uh, verse one to five is the same about Prophet Muhammad and his wife. Uh, Allah doesn't say a single word that you beat your wife. Uh, strike is ignored in chapter 43, verse 5. So there are a lot of uh, verses. As I said, if you like to hear more, you can uh, come to my uh, channel after this, and I will uh, read all those verses for you. Thank you. Question from YouTube uh, Flaked. For the perfect Dawah, why should an Iranian follow Islam, quote, in Arab religion and not Zoriantarianism, quote, the native religion of Iran. Okay, because um, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, absolutely 
uh, wrong, uh, you know, uh, to say this, that, um, for example, a, a European cannot follow Judaism or Hinduism or, you know, other religion. Or, I don't know, maybe, for example, Swedish cannot become Christian because they had also a pagan uh, origin. They should follow their, uh, you know, parents. Or uh, somebody from Chile cannot become a Marxist because Marx was, uh, you know, from Germany. This is absolutely wrong. When you see something is right, then you have the right to follow that, uh, you know, that belief, wherever it, it comes from. All right. Thank you. Question from Church of Entropy. For both, is Islam a sect of Catholicism? Uh, you want to, uh, because... And that is for both. I, Either one's go first. I think it's more like a sect of Judaism, or an offshoot of Judaism. I don't, I don't think it'd be a sect of Catholicism because it's, I don't think they accept Jesus. So, more of like a sect of Judaism. All right, now I can answer. <clears throat> uh, God sent prophets, uh, a lot of prop, uh, prophets in the past, and one by one were completing the other one. Okay, uh, Moses uh, was completing the previous prophets. Jesus was completing uh, Moses' message. And Prophet Muhammad completed all messages. As I said in the beginning, that uh, God wanted to solve our problems entirely. So he put his final message, which I read as said that it is equality in Quran and in Islam and gave it to Prophet Muhammad so that uh, that message take us out of the jungle we are living in and everybody love one another, another share everything with each other and get rid of this, uh, you know, jungle system that uh, uh, me, just me, and I'm ready to kill millions of people to become richer and richer. So this is um, my answer to that question, that it is the completion of the previous messages, not uh, a sect of those, those messages, yes. <clears throat> and then a follow-up and a reminder, you can always send your questions to either or both of our debaters. Once again, a follow-up from Church of Entropy to both who wrote the Quran? What evidence supports this? I don't know. Okay, uh, who wrote the Quran? Uh, Quran was memorized by many companions of uh, Prophet Muhammad, and uh, it was written in um, uh, partly on different, uh, you know, uh, skin and so on and woods, but um, entirely was memorized by. A companion of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and because after Prophet's death, and uh, so there were some battles, and uh, some companions were killed, so they decided that they have to uh, put the put those verses in a book so that it is saved, and they did it. They put it uh, uh, in, in a book, and it was protected uh, by God, uh, so that nothing will enter this book and uh, what uh, the great evidence for that, that it was protected by God is that the verse of stoning adulterers, which is a, a barbarian, uh, you know, act of um, pagans, Roman pagans, they were, um, they were stoning uh, adulterers, but not men. They were uh, stoning women because men could, uh, you know, marry uh, as many wives as, as they wanted. So, uh, but women didn't have the right because women were property of their men. So if a woman uh, commit adultery, so they would stone her to death, okay? And these barbaric acts was, was uh, entered to, into uh, Bible and Torah, but they tried to uh, insert it in Quran and they couldn't. So what they did, they came with fabricated hadiths and said that the verse came down, but it was eaten by a goat. And <laughs> yes. Uh, it was eaten by a goat, but which is absolutely lie. Uh, God would never allow me, a sinner, to punish another sinner for his or her sin, especially in such a barbaric way. God is the most merciful and forgiving God, and I have no right to punish anyone, okay, for any crimes. It's only God who has the right to punish people, because I'm not the right judge. I only can, you know, I only can... Um, treat them, to teach them, to guide them, 
the guidance, uh, Quran has many verses, says to his prophet, Prophet Muhammad, the, the guidance has come. Let who believe, believe, and who disbelieve, reject it, let them reject it. You are not controller over that. You are just a messenger. So I'm also uh, giving the right, the same message that Prophet Muhammad has given, and uh, it's up to people to accept it or reject it. I have no right to punish anybody, to judge anybody, okay? So this, uh, this is a great uh, uh, evidence that Quran was protected because those people who wanted to corrupt Quran and they couldn't, so they came with this fabricated hadith and said that the stoning uh, of uh, adulterers came down and it was eaten by a goat. Thank you. And then $5 super chat from uh, Zargos. I do see the end of that. I'm just appeasing the TOS gods, but thank you for your question. He asks, 65.4 is not an Nisa, it's Talik uh, liar. He, and uh, also, what do you call a woman who hasn't had a period yet? So, uh, asking me? Yes. All right. So, there are there are women who uh, have problem. They they don't have uh, their period. They they never menstruate. This is known. Okay. Or the, their menstruation is not regulated. Okay. So they might it might delay months or you know even uh, because the period was three months in that verse. Okay. So. Uh, the, uh, it was not possible for a woman who has not uh, her menstruation uh, that three months wasn't, um, I mean, Quran says that this three months is for all, even for those who haven't had the menstruation or they, their menstruation is not, uh, you know, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, is not regulated. Uh, I don't know how to, to say it, but anyway is for those women who have problems with their menstruation. Thank you. And then a question coming in from Gina. Gina from Colum. My question to the perfect Allah, which one of the 38 different Arabic Korans do you follow? The YouTube channel DCCI published scientific research on the thousands of textual variants plus errors. Okay, uh, I don't know uh, who is that because I gave you a clear evidence that um, that Quran was preserved and protected, okay? And those scholars who wanted to enter a verse in Quran, they couldn't. Okay, they came with the fab many fabricated hadiths, okay, and said the verse came down and it was eaten by a goat. So if Quran was corrupted, they would easily insert that verse as well there. They did it with Bible and Torah. And I say to my, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters and uh, Jews that the most loving God would never allow us to stone another human being to death. So those verses in those books are uh, fabricated. That's why those books are, have been, uh, you know, fabricated or corrupted, but they couldn't do that with Quran. And they did uh, in this way. So this is, if it was possible, if what they said is uh, correct, there are some, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, maybe, um, uh, how do you say it? Uh, 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 different uh, dialect maybe, but the meaning hasn't changed. The meaning is exactly how it came and how it should be, okay? So the, there is no, uh, uh, you know, for example, as I said, uh, a verse that has been inserted from a man or a, a person has been inserted in Quran. All verses are from uh, God himself. Thank you. And question from Duncan for T-Jump. Are you excited for Skynet? Doesn't the Terminator franchise offer an example of an ideally secular form of civilization? Uh, sort of. Like, yes, I'm looking forward to AIs actually taking over. It won't look like Skynet. Uh, we'll have a morality that is placed into them. 
kind of looks like my morality and my YouTube channel. So no involuntary imposition of will. Impossible to force anyone to do anything they don't consent to doing. That'll be more like what society is going to look like when we have AIs. And yes, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. And question from Pudu. Ask the perfect Dawa. It says, ask that Dawa guy why Islam is not compatible with other religions. Uh, what do you mean compatible? In which way? Do you, do you understand? I don't, but uh, he can always send in a follow-up to that if he wants. Yeah, give an example why it's not compatible. Why? I mean, uh, Islam has the, the final message and the, the message that humanity needed, as I said, and then, um, you know, I don't know what he wants to say exactly, okay? So he better write, or he even can, as I said, can call in after this, call in on my channel, I will be live and he can talk to me directly. Thank you, and a big thank you for a $20 super chat from Doc. If it was perfectly memorized, why did the prophet say, may Allah bestow his mercy on him as he has reminded me of such and such verses of such a surah? Uh, he's uh, quoting someone, Sahih al-Bukhari after he hearing a man recite the Quran. Uh, okay. second. I, I got to go to the bathroom, so I'll be back in a minute. And Amy, I put one of the super chats on my channel, uh, which was a question for him. If you could read that like last or right before you go. Sure. Back in a minute. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this. Um, I said that this is not the Sahih Bukhari. It has a lot of fabricated hadiths on that uh, Bukhari. So I don't believe everything Bukhari has said, uh, as he said, as I said, uh, that he uh, put this, he said that a verse of Quran is missing. And uh, that's absolutely um, a trash because all verses of Quran are in Quran. He tried to, he and Muslim uh, is another uh, Hadith fabricator who put uh, these fabricated Hadiths and said that the, uh, the verse of stoning um, came down, but it was eaten by a goat. So that's why it is not in Quran. So they tried uh, in many different ways to put their own beliefs and ideas and, uh, you know, in, in hadiths. So uh, as I gave a good example that why it is perfectly preserved, that the, they tried, but they couldn't to insert this verse. So they put it in a hadith. And I would like to um, uh, to stay here as well. Again, uh, I have said it several times before that I want to have a debate with um, Daniel Hagogaju, and uh, because uh, uh, he's uh, uh, you know he's mi misrepresenting Islam. Uh, he represents a very fascist um, view of Islam, and. Uh, uh, somebody like me need, uh, has to stop him uh, to ensure that he has zero knowledge of Islam. Islam is not what these um, backward ISIS followers, uh, you know, describe. So I would like to ask him uh, for a debate here on a modern day debate. And I asked uh, James last time. I don't know if he has asked uh, this Daniel. I call him Daniel ISIS Jew. <laughs> Thank you. And then a super chat coming in from Garrick. Five dollars. Can you say one bad thing that true Muslims have done or do? Also, have either of you read Tommy Robinson's book or Simon Rushdie? I'll ask T jump the end, but if you'd like to answer, floor is yours. Perfect dollar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I can say. Uh thousands of bad things that people do, okay? And they are Muslim or call themselves Muslim, okay? People make mistake, but uh, of course, people like ISIS, Taliban, they do a lot of terrible bad deeds under the name of Islam, which is absolutely uh, goes against uh, the princip uh, principles of Islam. And uh, about those books, I know about Salman Rushdie, 
uh, that he took a fabricated hadith and said that uh, uh, there were some, uh, you know, satanic verses, uh, that all of these are from fabricated hadiths, uh, and they are not uh, true. They are just uh, uh, some uh, people were writing books to sell them and become richer. And Allah says in Quran, woo to you, uh, that you write with your own hands a book and want to sell it and say it is from uh, God. Okay, so Allah, uh, you know, curse these people. Thank you. And then T. Job, if you would also like to answer, they want to know if you have read Tommy Robinson, Tommy Robinson's book, or Simon Rushdie. Uh, so, Simon, Simon Rushdie, not Simon. Uh, so That's true. It says Simon, but you're right. It's probably Solomon Rushdie. Solomon Rushdie's Solomon. Solomon Rushdie's uh, the Satanic Verses. I've read most of that one. I haven't read any Tommy Robinson. Yeah, Salman, Salman Rushdie, not Simon. Now it makes me wonder if they were doing a joke because it's both, it's Tony Robinson, right? And Salman Rushdie. But yeah, yeah. Uh, send in love to everyone out there. Keep on sending in your super chats and questions. For Dawa, why don't yes. more Muslim, moderate Muslims, condemn actions of radical Islamic groups? They provide too much coverage for bad actors, in my opinion. Yeah, they, you're right. Exactly. They got, get too much coverage. As I said as well, that those, uh, you know, those powers who want to sell weapons, they want to create conflicts. They don't want to, you know, um, um, uh, you know cover such a groups, uh, moderate groups, and they don't want us at all to, you know, to... Uh, to bring down these dictators, these uh, you know terrorists, to change the the region because they sell too much, uh, too many weapons. Okay, so they need conflicts, and uh, we condemn them. We uh, want to. We are fighting them. As I said, the Central Bank of International Terrorism and the, these fifty uh, Republicans also they said that uh, Joe Biden is going to enrich all terrorists on the planet, giving them hundreds of billions of dollars. He tried very hard. You cannot imagine how hard he's trying. He's giving everything to the Iranian fascist regime. The, the deal which Donald Trump tier, he's trying hard to go back to that st stupid, uh, you know, deal and give even nuclear weapon to the Central Bank of International Terrorism. And they they censor us. They censor us very very much. Okay, so unfortunately it is that. But we there are a lot of uh, Muslims and the scholars also who condemn these uh, things, but these acts, but uh, we don't get any coverage, yeah. Thank you. Question from YouTube Flaked. For the perfect Dawa, 2000 years ago, before Islam was ever born, Zoro and, I got it right in twice, Zoroastrianism, Iran, was a highly rich country. Why would you claim Iran was nothing before Islam invaded it? I didn't say it was, was nothing. <laughs> I didn't say it. I said that um, we didn't have, uh, there was no any equal right for education. Uh, only rich could uh, educate themselves. We, we don't have uh, scientists or poets before Islam uh, came to Iran. After Islam came to Iran, even poor classes, they could also study. So they studied hard. And we had a lot of, uh, you know, artists, a lot of uh, poets, a lot of uh, scientists. As I said, Ibn Sina is one of them, okay? So uh, though there, were, uh, there were a lot of injustice before Islam uh, come to Iran. And that's why uh, 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 some few Arabs could, could easily occupy an empire because People didn't want to fight uh, these new ideology. They saw them as, uh, you know, uh, freedom fighters or whatever. That's why they didn't want to fight fight them back. Otherwise, few Arabs with, uh, you know, just a sword couldn't uh, occupy the, one of the biggest empire uh, at that time. Question from Muhammad Rashid. Uh, and for the perfect Dawa, wasn't the M-E-K, -E which the perfect Dawa belongs to, 
recognized as a terrorist organization throughout most of Europe and North America. <clears throat> okay. Um, this is actually, I would like to uh, talk to him directly, but because it's not possible. In 1997, uh, um, when a so-called moderate president came to power in Iran, his name was uh, President Khatami. So uh, President Clinton wanted to appease that uh, so-called um, you know, uh, moderate president. So they put the biggest enemy of Iranian fascist regime in terrorist list in, in, to, uh, you know, to empower these uh, so-called uh, reformists against those so-called uh, you know, conservatives. But it turned out that it was a wrong policy and uh, uh, MEK went to, to the court. And in 2003, by the way, Europe, uh, by force of Jack Stroll, British, uh, British foreign minister, a corrupted man who was kicked out of the parliament a few years ago for corruption. That man forced also Europe to put MEK in terrorist list, uh, uh, list uh, in, K, uh, sorry, in order to appease the fascist regime of Iran. But the two courts in Europe and uh, UK in 2009 removed MEK from terrorist list, said that this group is exactly freedom fighters. They're like partisans. They are not terrorists. So they forced European Union to remove MEK from terrorist list and a court in Washington forced uh, Hillary Clinton to remove MEK in 2012 because all these courts, when it comes to the court and to, to justice, MEK wins. But when it comes to politics, yes, uh, MEK lose because polit politics, they think about their interests, the money, the oil, the, the weapon they want to sell. But courts think about, uh, you know, care about justice. And the courts, they order to all these governments to remove these freedom fighters uh, from their, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, what is it? Um, uh, sir, uh, the, the, the parliamentarian who was killed a few few months ago in, in London, uh, Sir, uh, what was his name? Uh, MS, yes? Do you remember? He was uh, killed by, by a, a, a knife man. Sir uh, MS, he was, it was a few months ago he was killed. He was one of the greatest uh, you know, supporter of MEK. And uh, he was one of them who fought hard to remove MEK from terrorist list. He was a great man as well. And he was killed by terrorists, unfortunately. Thank you. And then a question from Mohammed Rashid, but in a different direction to T-Jump. Is T-Jump aware that on the Shahafi school within Sunni, which makes female genital mutilation mandatory. The majority of Muslims do not practice this. Um, okay, I don't see how that's relevant to what I said. So yes, there are some interpretations that don't do bad things. The question is, is what did the majority do and is it more prevalent in that ideology than other ideologies? And so if there are other ideologies that have less overall, like zero, zero female genital mutilation and secularism. That's a better ideology. So the point here is that if you adopt Islam, a lot of people who adopt Islam do do female genital mutilation. Therefore, Islam is less good than an ideology that has none of it. Question from Pew, uh, Pew Do, please ask Dawa that without oil and gas, do you think most Muslim countries can survive, don't include secular countries. <clears throat> okay, uh, <clears throat> I think that somehow I wish that they didn't have oil and gas because if they didn't have it, then uh, the, the superpowers, they wouldn't have uh, all this interest in them and keep them back for, then instead they would uh, move on and uh, develop and, uh, you know, they would be on their own and they would, uh, you know, rely on other things. But unfortunately, because of this oil and gas, you know, for example, now this uh, 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 Ukraine crisis uh, is mostly because of oil and gas, you know. Uh, and, uh, Russia wants to secure its way to Europe, uh, its oil and gas way to Europe, that's why. So all this is, uh, all these problems is uh, because of, uh, as I said, because of money. And this oil and gas is also, of course, it's a big, a huge, um, benefit for them and that's why they make coup d'etat they support dictators in our countries 
unfortunately. That's why we, um, you know, we are trying to get rid of these dictators to, to, you know, to develop so that we are not just relying on oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. I will say these will be the last few questions. So if you tried to get in, I'll try and ask our interlocutors. But if you really want any other questions, I think they're going to have to get super chats. We're sending love to both of our interlocutors. And question from Joe Schwartz. Uh, tongue in cheek. If Dawa apologizes for troublesome aspects of Islam, will T Jump apologize for his chair? Never. All right. And moving right along, YouTube flaked. Question for the perfect Dawa. There is no proof that Abraham built Kaaba. None. Kaaba was a pagan temple all along. Please provide proof. Thank you. All right. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not, I haven't gone to that uh, uh, archaeologic um, part. That, uh, but uh, I believe that Quran is sent by, by God. I have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, rational explanation, at least for many people or for myself, because I was an atheist, by the way. And uh, I got these uh, evidences that uh, Quran is a message of God and uh, many proof I have uh, as well. And uh, that's why Quran says that, that it was built by uh, Prophet Abraham. And, um, and I said that it is the final message of God uh, is the, the, the way out of the jungle. That's why we stand towards it. Uh, every day, five times a day, and ask God to show us the right way. And the right way is equality uh, uh, out of the jungle system that we are living, the inequality that uh, make us to do all bad deeds to become richer and or to survive. Those who make one dollar a day, they also have to do a lot of bad deeds to survive, to eat. Farmers of Afghanistan, they produce 90% of the world opium to survive. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's the, the system that uh, makes them to do that. Otherwise, they don't like to, you know, to harm other people, okay? So this is uh, my answer, I think. Thank you. And then a question from Shames Omar. Ask Perfect Dawa how many Islam Islamic scholars he has discussed his version of Islam with and were they convinced of his arguments? First of all, there are scholars of Islam that I follow as well as I, I said that they they agree with me and uh, I said that uh, we are millions and I have had discussion with two scholars. One of them was too shamed to share with me the video because he made a stupid argument <laughs> about that verse of Quran, which was they say that it was eaten by a goat and he was a scholar. Uh, I don't say his name. Uh, then another scholar, he was also too shame, and he was saying, don't record it, but I record it, and it is on my channel. And uh, yes, of course, he, they, they were both, um, you know, extremists, and um, they, they, they were not agree with my, uh, you know, my interpretation, because they were extremists. And one of them was saying, for example, that we stone people because we want to, uh, you know, purify them so that when they go other side, they are not going to be uh, punished. So it shows uh, any Muslim understand that how uh, irrational, uneducated is a, uh, a scholar who says that we take God's responsibility here and punish people so that because it become a good deal that I go and, uh, you know, I do a crime, I uh, rape somebody or have sex with somebody and then I get stoned maybe five minutes in, and then I have the beautiful uh, eternal life in heaven. Is that a good deal? <laughs> so it shows very much how uh, irrational uh, such as scholars are, okay? I have it by the way on my channel, the, the, the debate. Thank you. And then a question from Pew Du. Ask Dawa, if Islam is peaceful, then why did most of the followers of Zoroastrianism fly to India? 
all right, Islam is peaceful, but of course I said that not many, um, not everybody are peaceful. And uh, some have gone after these uh, fabricated hadiths or wrong interpretation, but mostly after fabricated hadiths and uh, after, uh, you know, following the, the uh, scholars, wrong scholars who, uh, you know, uh, teach them wrong things because Quran clearly says that no compulsion in religion. Oh, Muhammad, you are just uh, a reminder. You are just a warner. Okay, so um, the right is uh, you know clear from the wrong, and so on. So everywhere in Quran says that fight only those who fight you, and fight as long as they fight. Okay, so there is no oppression, and uh, there are so many other um, you know. Uh, many other examples that how Muslims and Jews and Christians and other religions, they were living uh, side by side in peace in hundreds of years in many, many places. Thank you so very much. Question from Free Somali Minds. Uh, for perfect Dawah, are you Sunni or Shia? Oh, I'm none of them. I converted to Islam because I believe that Prophet Muhammad was not Sunni or Shia. So I follow Quran and those hadiths that, uh, you know, everything matches with Quran, even hadiths that match with Quran, uh, then I follow them. I'm not following, a, uh, you know, particular um, uh, sect of Islam. Thank you. Question for your way or Yahweh tested by fire. Tell your friend T-Jump that I would be willing to humble him to the reality of Christianity being an objective truth. Is it that uh, seven uh, day Sabbath? You know that, TJ? I think he's the guy. Have you heard, seen him? Uh, I don't think so, but if he pays my $50 debate fee, he can <laughs> debate me, but just wait for him to pay me my 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. We support that, and hey, come contact James and all of us in Modern Day Debate. We'd love to have you. And all right, uh, this is, <clears throat> looks like the last three or four questions. Free Somali Minds for Perfect Dawa Quran 16 to 75 talks about slavery. Do you believe slavery is good for society? <clears throat> Absolutely not. Uh, I, I have to uh, read the, the verse. Quran always say about, uh, you know, treating uh, people well and freeing the slaves because <clears throat> slavery, I said that Quran, uh, uh, Allah wanted to solve all problems, but <clears throat> he didn't <clears throat> because it was too early. He didn't intend to solve all problems immediately. <clears throat> so he wanted to uh, solve problems uh, you know, step by step, because there is no compulsion in religion. That's why he sent hundreds of thousands of uh, prophets one by one, <clears throat> slowly, slowly. And that time was not possible to, you know, abolish slavery, uh, you know, uh, right away entirely. That's why Allah says that if you do this, you have to free a slave. If you do that, you have to free a slave. So uh, Allah is against every uh, you know, oppression, every oppression. And slavery is also another type of oppression. So uh, Islam uh, doesn't agree with slavery. And um, yes, as I said, <clears throat> it, it wasn't meant to solve all problems immediately, but slowly and slowly because people wouldn't understand they were not prepared for, for uh, all problems be solved totally. Even today, people are not prepared uh, for uh, many, uh, you know, messages of uh, Islam, uh, as I see, even Muslims are not, uh, <clears throat> you know, prepared. Uh, last night I was, uh, you know, talking to um, a Muslim YouTuber, and I was telling them about mercy, forgiving, and they were, oh, what do you say? <laughs> no, come on, we have to execute uh, murderers and so on. And I was giving them verses of Quran, they were rejecting, and they were Muslims. I said, Prophet Muhammad says that, the best pl the uh, the pleasure you get from forgiveness you will never get it uh, uh, in revenge and you say that no we have to punish people uh, so you go against teachings of prophet muhammad yourself so people were not prepared at that time even today most people are not prepared so slowly slowly yeah, we have to educate them yes 
thank you. Question coming in from Pudu Tadawa. I am talking about the issue related to China, Myanmar, India, Europe, the U.S., Australia. Each country which I mention doesn't have good relations with Muslims. T-Jump, your input too. So I guess for both of you. Yeah, so um, they don't have, uh, I don't know from where he get uh, this. China is uh, one of the greatest supporters of the Iranian fascist regime. Russia, North Korea, uh, Europe, USA, they support Iranian regime. They have been supporting in 42, three years, okay? In many different ways. So I don't know from where he said, China has signed a, a 25 years agreement with Iranian fascist regime a few months ago, and they kept it secret from Iranian people. So uh, I don't know from where he says that uh, they don't have good relations. They have relation, but in a bad way, unfortunately. I don't know uh, some other countries he mentioned. I didn't remember all countries, but China, Europe, USA. So they have a good relation with all these terrorists and dictators. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and then T-Jump, if you wanted to respond. Uh, well, I think he was talking about bad relations in that Muslims cause wars and conflicts all over the world. And so the fact that like, there's a big conflict between Islamic countries and Indian countries right now, and so they don't really get along. And he's, I think he's asking the question, why is it that uh, Muslim countries and other countries that aren't Muslim often get into conflicts and wars and don't get along? And he seems to be implying it's because of Islamic doctrines of uh, war and conquest in, exemplified by Muhammad. Mm. Question from Joe Schwartz. T-Jump, what is your favorite thing about Islam? Dawa. What is your favorite thing about atheism? We, I don't know. We, I said it, actually. I uh, said that um, uh, I prefer atheism over uh, those barbarians like ISIS, Taliban, because at least they don't uh, you know, commit all those uh, terrible crimes. And, uh, but those, uh, yes, um, of course, I don't uh, accept uh, atheism. And uh, I said that I, uh, I have said it many times before as well, that I prefer them over these barbarians, of course, in any religion, any, yeah, of course, even uh, if we say that, uh, um, what is it, Stalin, of course, he was an atheist as well, I wouldn't prefer uh, Stalin over anything, you know. I prefer those peaceful uh, atheists uh, over those uh, violent, um, you know, Muslims. And so we only got two questions left because I combine the last I one think, into a big one. I think TJ should also answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. did he? Yes, um, that's right. Uh, what is your favorite thing about Islam? 72 virgins, uh, I guess. I'll we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for both of your answers. Wanted to get a minute. The last thing, YouTube Flake wants to know the perfect Dawa. Do you think Iran would have been way better had it been Zoroastrian, a country and not Islamic? Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, I cannot uh, predict anything. As, uh, for example, uh, <clears throat> many uh, Christian countries in Latin America, they are not way better. Uh, despite they are Christian, or uh, Greece, um, uh, <clears throat> they were pagans, now they are Christians. How, if they were better, way better, if they were still pagans or not, I don't, uh, I don't think so. So <clears throat> they were, uh, during that time, um, I, I said that it was such a dictatorship that uh, people uh, wanted to get rid of that dictatorship. That's why they didn't fight uh, Muslims at that time. So it wasn't way better that time either. There were dictators and so on. Yes, and uh, with few teachings, uh, you cannot, uh, you know, get rid of all problems. Yes. And all right, the last question of the night. It's a big <clears throat> one for the perfect Dawa because he's got three sets of verses. Can you <clears throat> ask the perfect Dawa? about 
And then can you also ask him about sex slavery in verses 66-1 and 66-2? I have to read the, because those verses, because I, I, as I said, I haven't memorized all those verses, okay? <clears throat> so I, I, I would ask him to uh, come to my channel and then I will talk to him there. And uh, I will have more time to, to read the verses and then answer him. Because I have read the verses, but <clears throat> I don't memorize them, okay? And I said that uh, slavery uh, <clears throat> and every kind of uh, oppression in Islam is condemned. <clears throat> and um, Islam has tried always to release slaves by different ways, okay? If you do this, if you kill someone, you have to release a slave and so on, <clears throat> many different ways. Thank you so very much. That was a great transition, in fact, because I want to thank you all for joining us on Modern Day Debate. We, of course, are a neutral platform welcoming everybody from all walks of life. If you're looking for more fantastic debates in the future, please don't forget to like and subscribe, including tonight's debate on Islam versus atheism, which is best. For society. I do want to thank both of our interlocutors, T-Jump and the Perfect Dawa, for joining us today. And if you liked what either of our guests said, both of their links are in the description below. With that, I am Amy Newman with Modern Day Debate. We hope you continue having great conversations, discussions, and debates.